Okay, but yeah, from we last left it off, we were here with Welt and uh. It's Mr. Sunday! <laughs> Looks like someone needs help. Let's go check it out. Nah! <laughs> Let's not do that, Sunday. Let's go mind our own business. Screw the guests. <laughs> okay, nah, I'm joking. Okay, let's go see what this uh, little guy wants us to do for him. Drunken guest. Mr. Sunday. Hey there! Okay, see the moon in the sky? It's about the size of the cap on my soul glad bottle. If I just reached out my hand, I could grab the moon, couldn't I? How, how freaking old are these Pepeshi guests? I never actually got an answer for like how old these Pepeshis are. Because if if this guy's drunk, <laughs> does that mean it's kind of like underage drinking? The, the moon? You mean the Grand Theater? <laughs> yeah. Look at me. I've been away from home for too long. I must be missing that moon. <laughs> But it's no big deal. The Grand Theater here looks much better than the moon back home. <laughs> it's just magnificent. They told me not to sell everything I had just to come to Pentacone. Oh boy. How short sighted. Yeah, that's what I've come to realize about Pentacone. Most people just sacrifice freaking everything to come here. Like you saw in that previous stream we did, some. Idiots sold their children just to come to Panic County, which is fucking insane. Selling everything you had. Why would you go to such lengths? Why? Can't you see? Life back home is miserable. It's not really living at all. They don't grow tall, he's just basically an adult. Okay. <laughs> about tomorrow just sweet dreams you can do whatever you want that's what i call it <laughs> yeah now this is the life yeah no, the more i spend time in pentagon the more i realize this dream is not sweet as it seems is this truly living <laughs> huh what did you say young lady i didn't quite catch that <laughs> Oh, it's nothing, sir. You see, the traffic on Glock's Avenue can be dangerous. How about I ask a Bloodhound family member to escort you to Idine Park over there, so you can continue enjoying your sweet dream? Mm. Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. Wow. No wonder you are the leader of this sweet dream. You're totally a lifesaver. See you around, Mr. Sunday. And uh, it was nice chatting with you. <laughs> okay, goodbye, drunken kid. What's up, sister? This is the land of the dreams. But why do they live like this? The man we ran into, he doesn't seem happy at all. Even though sweet dreams are nice, they're just illusions. But for him, they're the only way to survive, even if it means giving up on reality. That's not really living at all. I suppose you have a point. But, in my opinion, that's how most people live their lives. I've encountered many idiots like that in the church. You'd be surprised. Why do you say that? You think that man is not actually living. But that's not quite accurate. Even without Panacone, people create their own illusions called self-value. People believe they have a predetermined value to fulfill. Gaining value means gaining power, and those deemed worthless are seen as the weak. However, value doesn't come out of thin air, mm. and there's a limit to it. To accumulate value, people have to take from others. So... The weak get exploited and oppressed. Oh, wow. Spitting fucking facts right now. That, that's actually kind of fucking sad in reality. Are you suggesting that this is not how things should be? Exactly. But, ironically, people don't think there's anything wrong with it. Because they uphold the illusory notion of self-value. 
and even the weak believe in it. The survival of the fittest. That's where all the tragedies in the world come from. People come to the sweet dream in Panacone to escape from that reality and find solace. No tragedies exist here, only happiness, although in its nascent form. Isn't that the same paradise we yearn for in our dreams? Sunday, I don't like the way you're talking, man. You're talking like a, you're the freaking villain now. <laughs> Perhaps that man is just an exception. Let's not jump to conclusions. We should experience the dreamscape ourselves. Just as I did at Dreamflux Reef. Yes. Seeing is believing. I'll accompany you. The Dream Master hasn't shown up yet, so we have some time for a stroll. Hmm. Is Walt still there? <laughs> You're not gonna come with us, old man? Thank you for everything you've done. I'll be waiting here. Okay, I guess you're not. Oh, what? See you, Daddy Welts. Until, until another time. Learn more about the dream before the dream master's arrival. Hmm. Glad to meet you again, Robin. How are the preparations for the Charming Festival coming along? <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm all so excited about it. <laughs> Wait a minute. Again? Is this one, one of the women you meet as Sparkle earlier? <laughs> going smoothly. Thanks for making the trip to join the festival. You're too kind, Robin. It's a pleasure to have guests from all over the universe celebrating day and night. Thank you for this wonderful button you gave me, by the way. Um, uh, what? I didn't give that to you. <laughs> I can't stand being lonely or bored, so this jubilant dreamscape is perfect for me. But if this went on forever, would it get boring too? <sighs> Not at all. Who would get tired of having so much fun? Every day, you get to wear fancy clothes, uh, explore all sorts of dream bubbles, indulge in delicious food without gaining weight, and you never get old or sick. As long as you can afford a room, this place is the ultimate paradise. But you know that only a few things can be brought back from the dreamscape to reality right oh boy yeah so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna leave here at all i'm never accepting reality ever again that's exactly why i don't plan on bringing anything back just enjoying the dream itself is good enough for me i, I mean i'm not one of those long living species i only have around 60 or 70 years in this lifetime and uh, there's so much to worry about being happy here is pure bliss. Only in this sweet dream can I truly feel like I'm in control of my life and fate. Oh boy. <laughs> Who would want to go back to reality after experiencing this bliss? I see. I genuinely wish you all the happiness in the world. And I wish you a fantastic performance, Robin. I'm off to the blue hour for the ball. See you later. Hmm. Seems like that guest's perspective didn't resonate with you either. Yeah, no. She had a valid point. I could sense her genuine happiness. It's just that... What you're trying to say is, she thinks she's in control of her life. But in reality... Yep. <laughs> she's just escaping... Literally from escaping from reality, reality permanently. ...in this sweet dream. Once she steps out of this sanctuary... Everything will be lost. Well, she did make mention of being able to afford a room. Didn't she? However, the paradise in our dreams, it doesn't have to end. Oh, joy. No, and the paradise we yearn for shouldn't be just a fleeting dream either. I like how this was like all foreshadowed because they had a difference in opinion when they were kids. <laughs> Yeah, they're gonna come to, like, blows at some point. They're gonna get into a fight, like, or something. Hello, old man. The scenery in this dreamscape is truly breathtaking, isn't it? Oh, Robin. Can't believe I'm meeting you in person here. What an honor. You're right. Even though time stands still in this dreamscape, it always feels fresh. I find something new every time. A philosophical mind. I hope I'm not intruding. Oh, not at all. Now, with little time left, I 
yearn for meaningful conversations, mm. especially with someone as esteemed as you. Do you mind if we chat? It's my pleasure. No need to be formal. Just speak your mind. You said with little time left. Please forgive me for being blunt. But is that why you came to Penacony? <laughs> yeah. I was part of a war, and while escaping from the Sarkozian mothership, what the I got exposed to some radioactive materials. Oh. And then, all my comrades died, and my hometown was wiped out by neutron bombardments. I couldn't bear to live with everything I knew gone. That's when I heard about a possible solution here, so I came. Heart-wrenching. I hope the family has been able to help you. They have, and I'm truly grateful for that. Mm. They provided me with a comfortable room, the most advanced life support devices in the cosmos, and a stellar team of caregivers. My physical body is now in the dream pool, sustained by life support. The me you see here is whole, rational, and no different from any other person. But I can't say the same for the me in the hotel room. Mm. My true appearance. No. I hope you never have to witness it, Robin. So, you'll be living forever in this dreamscape, right? <laughs> Just being able to live at all is good enough for me. Whether it's in this dreamscape or not, well, I don't really have much say in the matter. It is just very much reminding me, yeah, you being a, a good point, Landis, very much reminding me of the Chadwick quest. Hmm. My world has been torn apart, and my life could end any second. So, even if this whole place is an illusion, it's still my paradise, and I'll treasure every moment I spend here. Sorry, just putting, just drink some water. Envy those everlasting things. Huh. Oh, man's story. It's so tragic. Fortunately, this sweet dream gives him joyful memories to hold on to for the rest of his life. That's precisely why this sweet dream in Penacony exists. However, even the sweet dream has its limitations. While it provides solace to the disillusioned, it can't completely eliminate pain in reality. There will be a way out. Anacone is already on the right track. Yeah, jeez. Yeah, um... What, what the fuck? Oh, oh shit. <laughs> Meet the other Robin. Okay, we all know who that is. But yeah, you know, Sunday, you're sounding more and more like a cult leader by the second. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Look what we have here. A lovely young lady. Oh my god, you too Wait. are a very lovely young lady. Is that me? Holy shit, I have a twin sister? <laughs> Hello, other Robin. Brother, what a surprise to see you again. Show yourself. Your trick won't work on us. I've seen that trick already. Get out of here, mass fool. I've heard that a skilled mass fool received an invitation, too. That must be you, right? Did you enjoy yourself? Barely. Yep. The people here are way too gullible. A little bait is all it takes for them to bite. And they run away at the slightest hint of danger. In other words, they're naive and cowardly. Now that you've had your fill, it'd be wise to leave before it's too late. The music of the Harmony doesn't tolerate discord. What? Now that you have the real Robin, I'm useless? <laughs> oh, how disheartening. I've done so much for the family. You should be thanking me. Because if it weren't for me cleaning up this mess, Penacone would still be in shambles. Don't you think? 
That was a personal request from the head of the Iris family, and it has nothing to do with us. Step aside and stop causing trouble for the Charmony Festival. You gotta admire how Sunday is just like, I feel like he's like boiling, raging inside of himself, yet he still puts on that smile as if nothing's wrong. The Charmony Festival? <laughs> you think you can scare me? You think I have no idea what you're planning? I don't care what you're thinking, Chicken Wing Boy. <laughs> chicken Wing Boy. <laughs> I'm pretty sure our lovely Robin won't be appearing on stage. After all, you're well aware of what a sorry state this dreamscape is in under the banner of Harmony. Hanakoni, the land of the dreams. Is this truly the paradise you desire? Stop it. Yeah. <laughs> well, there goes the facade. <laughs> Chicken wing boy. Did I get to you? Our paradise is none of your concern, Master Fool. Leave now, or the family won't tolerate you anymore. <laughs> you also gotta love that Robin does the same thing. Fucking. <laughs> she's like threatening her, but she's like doing it with a bright ass smile on her face. <laughs> all right, all right. I'll go. But Robin, I suggest you seriously consider this. Do you really believe those living in dreams can escape pain and find true happiness? Ugh. Well, I've done my part. And now I'm simply waiting for the fireworks to begin. Bitten. Here, the last two gifts for both of you. <laughs> and don't lose them. If by some unfortunate chance the Charmony Festival starts against all odds, remember to use them during the show. And it'll be thrilling. Bang! Boom! <laughs> and then just the entire dreamscape dies along with us. I heard a raven calling in the distance. Oh. It seems the Dream Master will arrive soon. Uh, shouldn't we get Welt along? Actually, is Welt still all the way back there? Nah, he's gotta be here already, right? Okay, let's go meet this uh, new Dream Master. Sunday's like the evil Ayato, but he doesn't have something to protect or if he's acting. Yeah, true, he really just reminds me of like Ayato, but a bit more cunning and evil. Yeah, he has something up his sleeve for fucking sure. I I feel like he's gonna like turn against us. I really hope that's not the case though. Hmm. Let's wait here for the Dream Master to arrive. Back where it all began. Okay. By the way, brother, I heard you no longer have a sweet tooth. Back when we were kids, you used to steal my desserts. Seems like a lot has changed during my absence. What exactly happened? Well, someone has to stay awake even in this sweet dream. But that someone doesn't have to be you or anyone in particular. You're carrying too much on your shoulders, brother. The paradise in our dreams. It shouldn't be like this. Hanakoni is nothing more than a dream. It can't erase the worries and pain of reality or bring you happiness. Right. It only offers an escape from reality. Nothing more. Remember the old man we met earlier? Without this dream, he might have completely lost himself. That might be true, but even without Penacony, he could have chosen another path. As far as I know, the Intelligentsia Guild has been promoting their rehabilitation techniques for a long time now. That path may have been more ordinary and challenging, but now he is receiving hospice care in a comatose state, and his fate is sealed. Is Panacone granting these people a future, or is it taking it away from them? Yeah, that's my thoughts exactly. Like, escapism is nice every once in a while, but if you do it too much, then... You're essentially just throwing away the rest of your life. Well, don't forget this. Not everyone really has a future. The future for humanity is like the sky for birds. There's that metaphor again. People mistakenly believe that flight is inherent to birds because they've never witnessed those birds crashing to their death. Do you remember how we took in that little Charmony dove when we were young? Yeah, we took care of it. Provided food and water, groomed its feathers, and later, when I decided to leave Penacony, I opened the cage and set it free. 
This screams P5. I'll leave it at that. <clears throat> Last palace. Well, I... I didn't mention what happened to it in my letters because I didn't want to upset you. Shortly after you left, it crashed to its death right in front of your window. Oh, good lord. I had surmised as much. I knew you wouldn't have avoided mentioning the bird for no reason. Despite that unfortunate outcome, I still believe it was the right decision. Birds aren't meant to spend their lives in cages. They belong in the sky, even if they can't fly. But here's the thing. If there are birds in this world that can never fly, can we really assert that they belong in the sky? Oh, uh oh. I don't like that blue glow in your eyes, Sunday. That the same goes for humans, too. Let's take the Astral Express as an example. The Nameless made tremendous efforts to bridge worlds, gaining fame across the universe. However, only a few extraordinary individuals can endure such a perilous journey. Oh, uh, I fucked the dialogue ended. I didn't realize my bad. The trailblaze exceeds the capabilities of ordinary humans. Otherwise, why would this path be filled with broken rails, an abandoned express, and even a fallen eon? What? What? The express is not abandoned. Take that back right now. That's just sophistry. If that were true, then only the powerful would have the right to determine the future. Unfortunately, that's exactly what happens. Another name for the future is self-value. While this world has its fair share of heroes who inspire people and garner admiration for their heroic deeds, the majority oh, good of Lord. ordinary people will never become heroes in their lifetime. Sunday, you have a messiah complex going on right now, my guy. You need to stop. Some are born weak and vulnerable. Some find themselves trapped in unfortunate circumstances. Some fall victim to malice and cowardice. When it comes to survival, everyone is equal. And the weak can only watch as their value gets constantly diminished by external forces. That's why we should care for the weak and support them as if their suffering were our own. That's what the Odes of Harmony have always taught us. While the Harmony holds noble aspirations, the strong will always be strong, and the weak will always be weak. Not true, no. Even in this carefree dream, human nature contains greatness. But it also harbors inherent weaknesses that can't be eradicated. In the end, if people can't even secure their own survival, they won't care about the illusory future of equality. As long as the law of survival of the fittest prevails, there will always be fledglings crashing to their death. But if people don't live for the future, do they merely exist for survival? If even you, my brother, don't believe that the Harmony will save the weak, then which Eon can make our dreams come true? <sighs> People often forget that when the first bird took flight, the entire world envisioned a future where no more fledglings would ever crash to their death. Are you reading, sister? Uh, what are you reading? Flashback. Mr. Gopher White gave me a picture book. It's about the story of the harmonic strings. If I could become a chord master, I'd like to summon... Dominicus, the harmonious choir. Wait. <laughs> I want to sing with everyone. <laughs> Wait. So that all can feel happiness and joy. Dominicus, the harmonious choir. Wait a minute. <laughs> I would summon the Harmonious Choir, too. Is that... Isn't that the name of the fucking Weekly Boss? Oh, shit. Don't you... have a wish of your own, brother? Of course I do. It's just that... 
It includes your wish and everyone else's. I long for a true paradise where everyone can find peace. Then let's build a stage there and invite everyone to our performance so that both our wishes come true through the power of the harmonious choir. It's a deal then. Yeah, it's a deal. But how can I become a chord master? Hmm. Maybe you'll have to become a star first. Oh, fuck. Oh, damn. It all started out with their dreams being similar, but went very different freaking directions, as we can see. And returning to Trailblazers POV. Eight system hours into the Charming Festival. I thought. Any results? Oh, uh, yeah. Dream, dream Flux for real. Yes. And now, it's up to us to forge ahead. <laughs> Since he's already carried out his last wish, my final mission is complete. Wait, did we go into inside the dream bubble already? What? But pardon me if I sound curt. It's good to have determination. The path Mikhail left for you is not an easy one to tread. Why else would he have chosen to sleep in solitude? Staking everything on some nameless in the future. But you have the numbers. And in numbers comes strength. So that might just delay your inevitable a little more. Oh God, any more encouraging words? Could you say it like, yeah. <laughs> we, we have fucking... Like fucking God-killing weapons on our side. Do you think we can't do this? <laughs> Relying on Welt's negotiations alone is far from enough. Regardless of whether the other party will be compliant, negotiating simply allows us to meet them as equals and won't grant us an upper hand. Panacone is our rival's home turf, and we already have very few chips left to play with. Rather than idly sit around while the families got us blocked off, an offensive approach might be a wiser course of action. We're more familiar with the Stellaron's properties than most. And since it's the key to stabilizing the sweet dream, it's vital to the family's interests. Right. By attacking their core interests, mm -hmm. they're bound to retaliate hastily. And as the saying goes, haste makes waste. That's right. As long as we pose a threat to the Stellaron, Either with words or otherwise, we have a chance at gaining the upper hand. But the problem is, on the eve of the Charmony Festival opening, how exactly are we going to get close to the theater? Family security will be airtight. And if we brute force it, even if we succeed, it's too risky. Also, isn't the freaking, um, yeah, the theater in the sky? How are we supposed to reach it? Hmm. Uh, better be a good answer, Marsh. <laughs> you of all people? Of course you do. I never doubt you for a second. Looks like we have one more ace up our sleeves. Time for the master stroke. <laughs> Don't fucking quote Jing Yan here. You of all people? What's that supposed to mean? Well, you'd better believe it. Okay, Naruto. So I heard that before the Charmony Festival begins, there will be a pageant to kick off the festival. It's called the Soul Glad TM Festivity Auditions. Oh god. <laughs> or something. And it's going to be held in the moment of Scorch Sand. Are we gonna have to audition for a fucking pageant to get up there? As long as we clinch the top spot, we'll be able to attain the title of Festive Superstar. And be able to personally bask in the graces of Miss Robin. Uh, uh, not that that's <laughs> important. <laughs> What's crucial is that we can enter the Grand Theater before the audience arrives. So... How do we go about participating in these festivity auditions? <laughs> I've already procured special invite tickets from Miss Robin's fan club. Of course you did. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why'd you do that? To tell you the truth, I had been preparing to join the auditions all along. Oh. <laughs> but now it looks like even if I scrape through, I probably still won't have the chance to shake Miss Robin's hand. I mean, you can just ask her. We're friends now. <laughs> so they're still running this thing, huh? It was originally just a publicity stunt. 
set up by Mikhail to drum up attention. But it looks like it might be worth a shot. What is this American Idol? <laughs> it's like I guess somewhat it is. We'll follow Marge's plan. Mr. Gallagher, will you be joining us? <laughs> Mr. Gallagher, would you like to also sign up for the pageant? You'd be the most prettiest girl of all time. <laughs> I'm afraid I won't have the time. No. As a virtual character, I've already completed my final mission. Whether Penacone can awaken from this dream is all down to you. Should we ever cross paths again? I'd love for you to visit the Express. Yeah, now that we know you're actually cool and all. All right. I'll have to add to that data bank of yours you've got on the Express. And Miss Firefly, we thank you for all your support. We're faced with a formidable enemy. As long as the Astral Express and Stellaron Hunter's objectives are aligned, we're willing to cooperate with you. Just not with that bitch, Kafka. <laughs> We've already come this far together. I'd like to join you for the rest of your journey on Penacone. I'm pleased that we can finally fight shoulder to shoulder. I couldn't ask for a better ending. This is also the spirit of the Trailblaze. Now, everyone, let's prepare to move out. Yeah, I was wondering about that. Like, oop. Oh, we're already here. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say, like, like it, it's cool if Stell signs, signs up for the beauty pageant, or whatever this is. But what about Kalis? <laughs> how the hell, how the heck is he gonna sign up for this? Yeah, it turns out that this fall of Agnumata was was chill. <laughs> he wasn't actually, like, the main villain, like we all thought he, were, he was. Whoa! Hey guys, look, it's where the special program took place. Holy shit. It's actually real. Wow, they've really outdone themselves. I'm starting to get excited. Holy shit, the music here is kind of loud, though. I mean, we got four beautiful women right here, you know? <laughs> like, of course we gotta win. I can't imagine losing to NPCs. Excuse me, you four. What are you hoping to get out of all this? Um, an audience with the watchmaker. As the last group of contestants, how confident are you in overcoming all of this? The last group? Oh, come on. I actually wanted to take part in the fucking pageant. <laughs> Not gonna lie. <laughs> The Hunt's the Journal, the fuck? Under a sky, blanketed by banners, you buy for the crown. The sword and rose! Okay. Okay. <laughs> Magnificent and majestic. What are you, fucking Argenti's assistant? <laughs> a knight's head is hard as steel. Brother Lance Focus is stubborn as... The Elation's Journal? How many freaking factions are interviewing us? The Hunt, the Beauty, the, the Elation? <laughs> to be winners if we don't have fun <laughs> we'd all be sinners people are pouring in kind of feels like all sorts of baddies are showing up let's get in there quickly and enter the competition ladies and gentlemen please make way <laughs> make way uh Yeah, this would be super awkward if you were playing Kalis. I feel bad for all you Kalis mates out there for this. Also, this fucking track's a banger, honestly. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm the director of Soulglad's Factory, Ideen Leader. My four friends, introduce yourselves to the audience across the cosmos. Mm, hello, everybody. <laughs> I'm Himiko, a nameless from the Astral Express, and these are my companions. Ahem. <clears throat> Don't you guys need to hide your identities? Nah. <laughs> I can't hide it 
Anyways, Pentacony is plastered with our posters. And because the Astral Express is so well known, the family won't dare to make any rash moves. Oh, in case, in that case, hi, I'm Sam, a Stellaron hunter. <laughs> Just imagine. Hello, everyone. I'm Spaces, and she March 7th. Hello, everyone. I'm the Galactic Baseballer, and she say cheese. Hello, everyone. I'm hello, everyone. Is this really a good idea to have a talent show in this pivotal moment of our story? <laughs> <laughs> I like that they're just breaking the fucking fourth wall of this one. Oh, uh, God, all these options are so fucking good. Hello, everyone. I'm hello, everyone. I want to say that, but I want to... <laughs> I'm going to say this. God, I wish I, could, I wish I could, like, replay certain story modes just to see the other dialogue options in this. Because I want to I wanna see the responses to, like, all of these. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm the Galactic Baseballer, and she's Say Cheese. Time is precious. My four friends, come with me. You can quit and restart. That's one way to do it. Yeah, I, I would like to do that, but I do want to like interrupt the flow of the story. Also, I see birdies over there that I go. I gotta go get. That doesn't even rhyme, but okay. This place is buzzing. It really is. Fucking this music to banger. This is a miniature representation. Oh. At a time known as the era filled with boundless possibilities. <laughs> I love how this is like, kind of like a red carpet. Yeah, this fucking sh this, this fucking shit's a banger, honestly. Oh, okay, and there's where you uh, <laughs> find all the birdies around here. <laughs> okay, we don't need the advert like twice. Nameless, your arrival reminds me of the grand occasion when Pentacony was first established. I was still oh, young wait, I just realized. Lad back then, lured here by the watchmaker's ads, full of zeal and ready to make my first fortune in life. And hey, look at that in the background, actually. During a uh, wait, I pressed the wrong button. Day, Whoa, look at this place. I was resuscitated by a drink from Mr. Sousa. That sweet taste has since been etched in my mind. Holy shit. That was what drove me to create the soul glad that we all know and love. Today. We're in soul glad Disneyland. Let's go. The dream chasing era was truly a wondrous time. Oh, I miss those days and the watchmaker. Scorch Sand Hall is my homage to that time of boundless possibilities. Yeah, I was saying, like, this is in the background. I think that's Sunday and Robin right there, right? I, I think that, that's gotta be them. I wholeheartedly hope you make it to the finish and emerge as the next superstars of Pentacone. Now then, uh, is um, there anything you'd like to say before the competition officially begins? Yeah, one thing. Why is March looking directly at the camera? <laughs> what the fuck? March, you're supposed to be looking at the old man. Why, why is she... Yeah, why is March right here just looking straight into our souls right now? What are you doing? <laughs> nah, we win. <laughs> Can we get the ball rolling already? I got I ain't got all, all day, capiche? Rest assured, we are gonna take an L in this. I can feel it. <laughs> I fucking love the sorry of devs and their fucking <laughs> their fucking uh, inclusion of Gen Z slang in this game. Nah, we'd win. <laughs> Ain't that the fucking Gojo Jujutsu Kaisen meme that's been going around lately? <laughs> Rest assured, we're gonna take an L in this, I can feel it. Nah, nah, we'd win. <laughs> that's the trailblazing spirit. How about you, Miss March? Hello, everyone. What the fuck? You march speed running? Never thought I'd see the day. And challenging the limits. That's Miss March 7th for you. 
How about Miss Firefly? I hope that by the end of this journey, everyone will have achieved the outcome that they hoped for. Ah, <laughs> a wonderful wish! Miss Himmel, <laughs> what are you expecting from your team? <laughs> oh, I'm expecting to get coffee by the end of this. I'm freaking thirsty, I tell ya. Safety first, everyone. <laughs> Simple words, but full of warmth. Waiting for you are three stages, each connected to that era. The first two stages offer two distinct paths to choose from, with unique challenges on each route. And in the last stage, you will face off against a champion who has defended the title to this very day. Okay. A beloved contender whose noble virtues are unrivaled. So we're going to have to beat them in beauty, or do you mean we literally need to beat them up? Those are the rules. Simple. Everyone clear? Now, I hereby announce that the 33rd Scorch Sand Festival of the 20th season... The 20th? Of the How long has this shit been going on for? Alrighty, I guess we're an American Idol, the folks. Festival is drawing closer. We must reach the end as quickly as possible. Factoring in efficiency and safety, splitting up into two groups is the best choice. Oh, oh, I, I want to go with Firefly. Uh, no, I want to go to March. No, I, I want to go to Miss Himiko. Ah, oh, fuck, you do I get to choose? <gasps> March and I haven't known Miss Firefly for too long and aren't overly familiar. Okay, I'm okay with Firefly. <laughs> It'd probably be better if the two of you paired up. Fine by me. Let's do it. All right. I don't have a problem with that. Enough chit chat, let's do this. Say what? I get to pair a Firefly and there's no catch? There'll be a shoe in with me around. Hold up. Has any of you even bothered to ask me for my consent to this? <laughs> uh. Say what now? I get to pair with Firefly and there's no catch? <laughs> we'll split into the assigned groups then. Let's not waste time. Man, you didn't, you didn't even acknowledge what I just said. <laughs> Alright. I'm fine to going Miss uh, Miss Firefly again. Let's go, Firefly Day 2.0. Also, how many birds are there in this area? Okay, the good old 20. For some reason, I thought you could walk on those and they would like send you flying or something. <laughs> also, hey, creepy balloons. Disqualified. What the? What is that achievement? Oh wait, no, this is the permanent boarding pass achievement I got earlier. Uh, I also got these achievements as well. I'll break all boss stone balloons in the audition plaza. Okay. <laughs> No, we got disqualified. Well, I guess that's the end of uh, the story as we know it. Okay, also I got something in the mail here. Oh yeah, right. The uh, yeah. If you guys don't know about this, um, as of right now there is a uh, a Honkai Star Rail streaming thing on Discord. So if you like stream to a friend for like 15 minutes, you get these rewards, like 30 jades, and these subsequent rewards. Just yet, just letting y'all know for those of you at Discord. You can get like yeah, 33 jades for streaming to a friend. Alrighty, let us set off. Welcome to the first stage of Soul Glad Enterprises 33rd Scorch Sand Festival of the 20th season. Yes, you've heard that before. Play Fantasia. In this stage, you can choose between two challenges: the School of Acting or School of Action. Ooh, action! I want to see you transform to Sam, please. <laughs> In the School of Acting Challenge, you have to complete three performances from three scripts and move the panel judges. In the School of Action Challenge, you have to defeat three groups of enemies convincingly and reach the end. Ah, shit, do I actually have a choice here? Now, make your choice. Ah, shit. Uh, oh god, I actually get to choose? Oh, game, you can't do this to me. I, I want to see them both. Damn. Actually, yeah, we can't. Mm. Firefly can't transform into Sam right now <laughs> because otherwise we'll just blow a cover. Whoa, pinball, let's go. Whoa. Um. Oh, click on the button on the tracks and select the challenge arena to go to. Okay. Um, action challenge, acting challenge, ooh. Fuck, why do I have to choose? I want to see both of these. 
Honkai Star Rail, please, you gotta add, like, a story replay option, like, to all quests, because I do want to go back and, like, do all those, like, previous dialogue options and do this shit again, because I want to see the other choice. I want to see what we do like, with the other one. Action is just three fights. And, okay, then what does acting entail? Is it just dialogue? Damn, only one choice. On the one hand, I do want to see Firefly and myself acting. On the other hand, I mean, action, we, we beat up mobs all the time. So I don't, so maybe I won't go with action. Like, I wanted to go action initially because I thought, like, Firefly would transform to Sam. But that's probably not going to be the case. <laughs> they literally make no sense for it to transform to Sam here. I did come back for mine, and it's similarly unhinged, so I'll go either way. You want know since most of you chose uh, action, I'll go with acting. Just to satisfy your curiosity of uh, what this acting path is like. Let's go. Acting! Yeah! Competitors, allow me to introduce the rules of this challenge to you. There are three stages up ahead. On each, you will find an outline of a script. These three scripts were written by the legendary filmmaker, the oh boy. Watchmaker, <laughs> and depict various stories from Pinnacoli's era of pioneering. So following a script, so no different from what Firefly's been doing. <laughs> Your task is to bring those moments to life, find the right words, and act convincingly to make the judges feel the script's intended emotions. Oh, I wish you a successful performance. Also, a bit of trivia. The record score for this stage is held by a participant with fiery red hair. What? His exceptional performance brought even the strictest judge Wait. to Wait! Oh, it's like he wasn't even acting at all. Argenti? Is that you? <laughs> a participant with fiery red hair, his exceptional performance... It's gotta be Argenti, right? Where are- where is he? They say he's somewhere on Panacotti, but we have not run into this man even once. <laughs> are running out of time so let's get this over with quickly all right let's do so then pass the first school of acting test oh boy can't wait to see the hilarious of the dialogue options in this okay oh, just take a look at this pair such star quality since you've come as a pair i'll prep a two-person scene for you you two are you ready ready Envision that you both, driven by the spirit of exploration, are arriving at the land of dreams that is Panacone for the first time. But no. instead of lush lands, you find yourselves amidst swirling sands and desolation, far from the paradise the Watchmaker described. Role-playing a firefly? <laughs> I guess that's essentially what this is. <laughs> You're driving an old clunker through the wilderness of the dreamscape. Braving the cold wind, choking on the dust, and suddenly a fierce memory zone meme blocks your path. Oh no, Sleepy, it's you. Now, Miss Gray Hair, what line would you Grape. deliver to express your disappointment in Panacone? <laughs> they call me Miss Gray Hair. They usually call me Trailblazer, but okay, I guess my name's Miss Gray Hair now. Wait, no, both our hairs are gray. You can't, you can't say Miss Gray here because both my hairs are gray, gr grayish. What line would you deliver to express your disappointment, Pentagon? Great, I love living on the wild side. A brutish creature. Quick, let's run it over. What in tarnation is this hellhole? The watchmaker is a big fat liar. <laughs> I'm gonna say this. Very good. Now, though you're disappointed, your screen partner is conversely very enthusiastic. Now, young lady, you will say... This, this is great! I love living on the... Wild side! <laughs> okay, <laughs> Firefly, like, your acting needs a bit of work. Come on, bring out your Sam personality. Come on, bring out that edge. <laughs> very good, very intense. And then we cut to the story's next scene. <gasps> You find a job mending the rails, but the days are long and your endurance can't keep up. And you finally collapse in the endless expanse of desert. Oh no, I'm Suddenly, dying. Sweet 
rain falls from the sky, wetting your lips and rousing your spirits. Now, Miss Greyhair, what line will best express your surprise at this moment? If you choose the wrong option, unless you retry, oh really? Okay, then maybe I'll, I should pick the, the wrong dialogue choices here. Wowee, Pentecody, my Pentecody, you are truly abound with opportunities. Just let me die of thirst instead. Perhaps we were never meant to succeed. Just let me die. <laughs> Oh, right. Perhaps you were never meant to succeed. We're already at the next scene. You need to be <laughs> surprised now, not disappointment. <laughs> I, I just love to imagine that Fireflies is done with our shit. Wow, we Pentacony, you are truly abound with opportunities. But at this moment, your partner yet gazes into the sky, both her eyes closed. The raindrops fall, blurring her vision, and she tragically says, Perhaps we were never meant to succeed. Right? Right. <laughs> Fantastic! Both of you have an incredibly solid foundation in dialogue delivery. However, minds aren't everything in a performance. Please continue this story on the second stage. Up next, you'll be challenged with a body language test. Oh, God. <laughs> I hope these tests won't take too long. Hey, Firefly, you're on the mic, you know? You don't, don't say that loud. Whoa, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, already, I'm already enjoying the path I chose. All right, stage two. Hold a minute, let me you just go and snipe these balloons. Let's go ahead and kill our audience real quick. Alrighty, body language. Skillfully utilize body language to portray the story context I've laid out for you. Picking up from where we left off, a heavy downpour saves you both stranded in the desert. Ah! This rain quenches the anger in your heart. You look to your companion, now completely devoid of fighting spirit, wanting to comfort her. At this moment, what should you do to make her laugh? Pet her. <laughs> Pet her head. Tell a dad joke. Stand up and bear to move out. Roll about in the sand. Uh, I'll, damn, all these could be the right option, honestly. Pet her head. I want to see what she says. You seriously think that would make someone laugh? <laughs> I fucking love this, by the way. I fucking love Firefly absolutely done with our shit. I'm gonna take a screenshot of that, actually. That is fucking priceless. Alright, stand up, prepared, and move out. You look less like you want to make me laugh and more like you want to abandon me. <laughs> uh, roll about in the sand, tell a dad joke. Dad joke! Oh. I don't think dialogue is allowed here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, yeah, I I, I, I knew roll about in the sand was the right option. That's why I chose the other ones. What? What? <laughs> right answer. Your companion sees you rolling about in the sand and thinks about the arduous obstacles along this journey. She can't help but let loose a laugh. Rekindling hope in her heart. And so this girl. Uh, so this girl reacts. You didn't read the last word there. I'm. Gonna get back on my feet and keep moving forward. A tug at the heartstrings. The story continues to develop. <laughs> the heavy rain leads you both to sense a business opportunity. So you start venturing into the umbrella industry. But just as the business begins to pick up, Competitors start flooding the market with low-priced goods, squeezing your market share. You have no choice. The goods you stockpile at high prices have to be sold at a loss. This is a pretty self-destructive move, which drives your business to the brink of bankruptcy. At this moment, what would you, who refuses to admit defeat, decide <laughs> to do? I'll go kill my competitors. Leave to de dejectedly. Get up from beneath and grovel. Stand up and smack the table. <laughs> Leave the dejectedly. 
<laughs> you turn around, leaving resolutely, muttering on your breath. The hero's quest started for bang. For this dream, I've toiled and sang. If the dream repays me in pang, then I, the woman, will join the Annihilation Gang. It's totally giving up. Come back here. <laughs> Okay, now I'm gonna I'm gonna get on my knees and grovel. Oh, oh. you drop to your knees with a resounding thud and start repeatedly to bash your head again, hard against the floor. No towing enthusiastically to your basic your business rival. The key to a peaceful life lies in these five powerful words. Show me mercy, pretty please. Oh, is that how you pronounce? Oh, cow tallying. I thought it's no tallying. Never mind. <laughs> okay, but uh, yeah, stand up and smack the table. Ugh. I actually smacked the table. <laughs> you slam the table and rise up. They think you'll back down. Impossible. Dream chasers can be knocked down, but never knocked out. Fantastic. But it's a pity your friend does not agree. Seeing that you're up to your eyeballs in debt, <laughs> she sees nothing but despair in her future. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking about when I smacked the table. Just 28 stab wounds. You didn't leave him a chance, huh? <laughs> I, that's one of my favorite memes of all time. Uh, I leave Panacone in utter disappointment. Is that okay? <gasps> of course. Absolutely. I was this close to tears. Both of you possess exceptional acting talent. However, the true test is yet to come. You're about to encounter the harshest judge this show has ever seen. Oh boy. You'll need to rely on perfect performances. Please let me Argenti. No, okay, no, it's not Argenti, it's Argenti. I, I miss, I've been mispronouncing his name this whole time, I'm aware of that. But yeah, people have corrected me, it's Argenti. You pronounced the G. <laughs> All right, last one. Ah, uh, nope. It's just a good old generic NPC. Oh well. <laughs> if you pick action, it's fun despite all the action. There's so much product placement. Oh god, yeah. Now that makes me want to see like the the action route and see how fucking like yeah diabolical that route is. Because yeah, this one's are chaotic enough as is. <laughs> I, I, I ah. there needs to be a story replay option. Actually. Scenarios that you previously encountered were all from the film Once Upon a Time in Dreams. Two companions arrive on Panacone with nothing but a dream. Their desire for achievement is met with continuous setbacks. Ultimately, one continues on, despite spiraling into debt, while the other concedes defeat and leaves. Many years later, their paths cross once more in the thriving Penacony. Yet, they refuse to acknowledge each other because... She speaks like Black Swan? She kinda does, she kinda sounds like her. <laughs> I became a big shot, but she ended up distute. I fell into poverty while she is leading a normal life. I lead a, I'm leading a normal life, but she ended up distute. Uh, I fell into poverty. Against the backdrop of a revival. Oh, that's the right answer? Okay. The joy of reunion mixes with the sorrow of past separation, the awkwardness of being strangers, and the shyness of a long awaited encounter, all converging at this very moment. Give it a shot. Try and convey this bittersweet scene to me. <laughs> Bring it to life with precise and emotive acting. We can opt to make out a firefly. <laughs> is this ever going to end? I know. Why don't you try that clockwork thing you used before? Good. Firefly, sh shut up. You're on the mic right now. Don't say it out loud. <laughs> oh, I have to change her emotions. Use clockwork on the strict judge. Okay. Your performance is far from satisfactory. Okay. Clockwork time. I will make you pissed. Cut. Uh. A mogul who went from rags to riches, treating a former companion with such disdain. 
It just makes my blood boil. <laughs> oh, Come. joy. But we haven't even done anything. Is her imagination running wild again? Brilliant. Your portrayal outdoes the original. It's simply, 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 simply beautiful. What the fuck? That was the right answer? <laughs> what? <laughs> I thought angry would be the wrong option. <laughs> what? We have passed the test. Huh? We gotta hurry up. Stop I thought for sure angry was the wrong answer. Excuse me? <laughs> a mogul who went from rags to riches, treating a few fast with full marks. What? What? <laughs> I wanted to see all the wrong options before I actually did the right one. You're telling me making her piss was the right choice? <laughs> what? That is some fucking bullshit right there. I wanted to see the wrong options. Uh, maybe I should have started with making her sad and whatnot. Damn it, uh, I really wanted to see the other option dialogues. I think they were all correct. Yeah, maybe they were. How how was making her mad the right choice? I thought she would be like Gordon Ramsay and fucking like just reprimand us to like no end. Yeah, I'm as puzzled as you, as you guys are. Congrats to both of you for clearing the stage. But more importantly, are you having fun? Hell yeah. <laughs> fun is more important than success. Look at the time! You finished much faster than that red-haired contestant did. That red-haired contestant? Who is that exactly? <laughs> it is me, Argenti. Argenti. <laughs> he just shows up out of nowhere. You'll find out eventually. Uh, oh, wait, are you actually going to meet with him? <laughs> Welcome to the second stage of the 33rd Scorch Sand Festival in the 20th season, sponsored by Soul Glad Enterprises. Gunfire time! Of course this is all sponsored. Option to choose gunfire, <laughs> what? Another choice? Trial, or time, where you'll face Clocky's trial. Okay. Now, make gunfire or time? Are we finishing the quest today or are we doing a third part? Uh, finishing it today. I still have a good three hours left to stream, so hopefully I can complete the quest within that time. <laughs> I picked Hanu. I, part of me wants to go with Clocky's time. You can still do the one you did not choose in an adventure stream. Wait, adventure stream? Wait, what? Oh, you have the option to do it again after the main quests? Okay, that's good then. Yeah, I will, I will like, yeah, retry these other like options. Like, yeah, after the quest is over. And how do you basically shoot enemies with his bazooka? Okay, that seems fun and all, but... Gunfire time, gunfire trial, gunfire time, time trial. Time trial it interests me, so I'll, I'll go with this one. I'll, I'll, I'll go with time for now. Bam! Dear friends, uh. welcome to the wonderful Holy world. shit, that's a giant fucking dead clock. <laughs> Waiting you up ahead is the titular character from the beloved Clocky animation, Clocky! Clocky! It's said that the watchmaker dreamed up the idea of Clocky when he was just a boy. Back then, he was merely an apprentice in a clock shop. And one night, he dreamt that all the broken clocks started sprouting arms and legs. Ooh. Ooh, the jazz. Okay. Like a skilled pilot, he steered them towards the right path. As a classic figure who grew up with many, Clocky truly shaped a generation, solidifying the watchmaker's pivotal role in popular culture. Contestants, may you have a wonderful time with Clocky. <laughs> the trial of time. I hope it won't waste too much of our time. Ah, you're real funny, Firefly. Also, there's some... Um... Hey, uh, you lot over there. Uh, you want... Yeah, let's fight him. Oh, we, and we get to hear this jazzy theme again. Okay, so he said if if I kill them with an ultimate, I get the full reward. Answer me. Zero points. I hit the mark. Okay. The dice Let's do that then. Lost. Or maybe I'll take it all. all in. Ah, there you go. Top prize. All right. Then you regenerate skill points and energy. That's. Okay, that's uh -huh. good to know. Thanks for the heads up, Bex. Actually, does it say here? Okay, yeah, big price for follow-ups. 
Does it actually say in this? Oh wait, no, I can't inspect him anymore because he's dead. <laughs> Yeah, does it actually say in this uh, description? Oh, it does. I just didn't read that. Yeah, kill from an ultimate regenerates skill points and energy. After suffering killing blow from a skill or follow up, it regenerates energy. After dying from DOTs or basic attacks, it recovers skill points. All right. Head your bets. Ah, did not miss follow up. Uh, you know what? Nice. Let's play. Stars echo. To hey, my world. <laughs> the definition. Forty-two k. Holy crap. Twenty sure, k. Fail! Get out! Oh wait, that's all the enemies. I thought I had more battles. As if victory were ever yeah, dead. if you read the abilities, they say lose the 50-50 and guarantee, and then jackpot. No I feel like Hoy is just taunting us at this point <laughs> with those freaking ability names. That statue... Did it just speak? Also has a birdie on top of it. Do I even want to approach that? Oh. Oh, do I have to, um... How am I supposed to pull this? <laughs> uh, okay, I guess I gotta bring the bird down then. Cut the jigsaw pop up the side, okay. <laughs> Hello, I like to play Dreamscape Ticker. So this stage is requiring us to cure this thing with, with a whole therapy session now. <laughs> uh, we got an urgent matter to attend to. Can you please let us pass already? Don't be naive, buddy. Failure isn't a sickness. It's a sin. And sins can't be cured. You guys are just like the other challengers. You want to enter my inner self? Please be my guest, but you won't find anything worthwhile. I'm just a big piece. Oh. Oh, it's just a whole ass clocky puzzle. Just empty inside. Tick tock, it's time for me to make an appearance. Uh, but there's really nothing. How come you're here too? Ah, uh, where'd you come from? Ah, the plot thickens help. <laughs> Part of the show? Yeah, I mean, you see the clocky merchandise freaking everywhere? <laughs> in Dreamville, clocky is everywhere and can do anything. Like, right now, I could solve this problem with your big ticker pound, Tick Tock. Tick Tock! Oh, it's actually clocky. Why would you come and visit a failure of a clock like me for no reason? You see, we're all clocks, we're family. I want to help you be happy! <laughs> Tell your pal Clocky what's troubling you. I can't but help but feel like they hired the actual Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse voice actor to voice Clocky here. He sounds so much alike. I, I came across a startling revelation yesterday. Apparently, Dreamscape Ticker isn't the same as Clocky at all. It's just a discarded prototype from Clocky's early development. Please, just leave me be, Clocky. I just don't know how to face you. Because I'm just a failure. Good lord, this clock has severe depression. <laughs> oh dear. Seeing it like this is uh, utterly heart-wrenching. <laughs> but fear not. We're here to help it rediscover the missing parts of its inner self and guide it out of despair. Uh, how? There's only no way we can go, though. I guess even troop members can experience existential crises. <laughs> Don't worry, miss. I've already pinpointed its missing parts. 
Oh. Here, my friends. Better use that hamster ball night speed. All righty, Clocky. <clears throat> Excuse me, my throat was <laughs> a bit clogged there. Okay, hang on. I want to get this uh, little bird right out. So let me do this real quick. Uh, you go there. You here. You go up there. Do the top ones first. Then up here. Done so. Get down there, birdie. All right. Yeah. All right. Goodbye, birdie. Chat, can you redo this part with the area with Firefly? It'd be a side quest after the story. Okay, okay, then I'll be sure to like do that then if you do have the time. All right, yeah, thanks for letting me know because I do want to do the other parts with Firefly. It just wouldn't be the same if uh, she wasn't around. <laughs> oh, hey, uh, more enemies. Eh, you know what? Might as well. Yeah, let's look around first before we continue on. Harmony and unison. Whoa, wait. Oh, no, it's the same battle theme. I thought, like, what the... <laughs> if they made, like, a different battle theme for this area, I would have been just mind blown. Uh, S.A.S. Pekibi. Knowledge, the measure of truth and falsehood. I'm just going to do this just so these guys don't take away my energy. I don't want that. Or maybe I'll take it off. Boom. Risk high reward. Uh, I think we need to kill a clock man here, honestly. Okay, good. Uh, oh well, shit, never mind. Damn it, you gotta take away from my freaking Robin burst. Can't lie though, this freaking truck is jazzy. Why are you not walking around to Topaz? You should be able to find chests more easily. True, I just prefer the Walk of Robin because she's a new character, but I should be walking to Topaz. <laughs> I love that, by the way. He can just do his fall attack between waves. Okay, um... Who has enough ED left for you do? Me. Failure! Head your bets. Uh. Easy, Numby. Uh, shoot you, and then... Welcome to my world. I miss the follow-up chance! Ah, uh, darn it. Hey, don't hit Robin while she's singing. Come on now. Also, holy shit, the damage. Yeah, my, my victory never hit a 10k before. <laughs> okay. Grab that. Yes, Numpy, I can see the chest. Don't need to worry about a thing. Everybody loves free stuff. Okay, that one as well, and yeah, there's probably gonna be a third world after this, right? Like, everything comes in pairs of threes. Pairs of threes? What am I talking about? <laughs> Don't mind me, I'm just, uh... My wording's just all over the place right now. Hard work pays off. I'll say, uh, Tiny Clock Man. Alright, let's just fix you up real quick. Nothing's always been small as compared to other trotters. Yeah, he's, he's real tiny. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. How do I solve this one? Oh, you're blocking the way. Uh. Okay, this one seems a bit more complex than the other ones. Hmm. No, okay, I can't move this one any further. Oh, wait. Uh... Yeah, there we go, okay. <laughs> I was gonna say, 
I was on the grass there. Um. Okay, I need to move you. Nope. Actually, that's not the right answer. Okay, you can only move two ways. Oh, but hold on. Let me, let me cook, Chad. Wait, we're, we're almost there, actually. I just need to... Uh, wait. Wait, no, that works. That, that, that works. Come on, game. Give me at least that freebie. Okay, never mind. I need to maybe move this one. There we go. Ba bum Okay, and then one more to go, which is over here. Uh, okay, you're connected to you. You're not connected at all. You blocked away. Okay, so we'll have it like that. Then we'll shift it like that. Then we'll have it this way, so Clocky can come back. Yeah, there we go. This version's clock puzzles are challenging. It's kind of fun. Yeah, honestly, I do find these puzzles kind of enjoyable as well. It's just so satisfying, like, everything clicks. Yeah, more eerie building blocks. Also, yeah, you gotta love the freaking jazz in this place. Also, how many chests are there in this area? 32. Damn, okay, that's a lot. Numphy found another chest. Hey, come back here. Numphy? Oh, there you are. Oh, there's one of the gears. It is absolutely gorgeous. Also, there's a monster there. Hang on a minute. Yeah, we don't need to fight you. He's just he's just vibing. I mean, it is necessary. How, how the hell else are we gonna get, get across? Okay. Move about. Move the module. Bam. Also chest. Let me grab that real quick. Uh, wait, I have the option to move it back if I want to. I should, I think. Or, hmm. Actually, it might be a, a thing I can do on this side. Alright, whew, back to reality. Feeling lucky. Oh, there's a- oh, fuck, it's on the, it's on the dinosaur. Okay. Oh, what the- Oh, shit. I just noticed a bird at the end of the tail. <laughs> oh god, this bird's British. No, I'm not gonna help it. <laughs> oh dear, it's an origami bird. What's it doing in Beyond Overcook's tail? He's not cooking, Tweet. He's <laughs> Uh, okay, if you so, if you so desire. Whoa! No dirty tricks on questions. This is a new track. Ooh! Ooh! Really, really fucking techno-esque. Patience breeds success. Oh yeah, I can I can already see, I can already see myself just vibing to this battle theme. The market is unprepared. Um, um proof of depth E1 Topaz? Um no, my Topaz is not E1. He's he's uh, she's E0. The dice have been bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. I almost noticed that almost half of the characters have capes or flappy things. Either one side or cape-like. It's kinda hard to notice. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, true. Most of the characters have like flappy things on them. With the exception of some characters. Easy, Numbi. Uh, just to speed things up here a bit. Stars echo. Your definition. Uh -huh. bum, bum. <laughs> Energy. All right, you're free, birdie. All right, he yank him out. Yeah. Thank you guys. I feel about 70% complete. Thank goodness you're okay. But why did you burrow yourself into that fella's tail? Because that fella stole one of Mr. Big Tinder's pots. I wanted to help retrieve it, but I accidentally got myself stuck in the oven. Why is the bird British? <laughs> Okay, well, she a British birdie. Inner sub fragment belonging to the Sweet Dreams troop. <laughs> this is just too surreal. Oh yeah, I have heard that. Yeah, Fireflies VA actually voices some of the origami birds. That might have been her. <laughs> I don't know. The voices are too distinct. I'm not sure if they're like one and the same, but it sounds it sounds the same. <laughs> I lost Robin. Uh. Topaz to Himiko and lost Topaz Lycone to Jeppy Lycone and all of them were at heart pity. Oof. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I feel sorry for you, Seraph. That's that. That's gotta suck. Hey, I can sympathize. Man, yeah, my my Robin summons didn't go that well either. Uh, okay. Wait, wait a minute. Oh, do I call another platform? Oh, I do. There we go. Yep, for the life of a gacha player in a nutshell. You're not wrong there. Uh, okay, then... Oh, you turn back, then I go board you. I got all the vibe of this place. It's so freaking <laughs> jazzy and relaxing. <laughs> Also, hey, enemies. Uh, Numpy, nope. <laughs> we're, we're gonna kill stuff first. God, yeah, the music of the space have been, like, like so good so far. Yeah, keep hitting me. See what they'll get you. Uh, we'll hit oh, you. I'm not gonna use Robin's ultimate probably like until the second wave. These guys are manageable. Uh, I'd say the one downside of this team comp is that they have zero debuffers to help with Dr. Ratio. Your answers? I mean, Nuffy's debuff does count, and also Adventurine's skill counts as a debuff as well. But other than that, Dr. Ratio basically has like next to no debuffs. Watch your head. Okay, uh, on you. Damn, I missed the ultimate, like, many times in a row. Oh yeah, I have heard something about Robin's ultimate. Apparently, if you fight Kakolia or Fantilia, or any of the weak boss for that matter, she cannot override their boss theme. I'm asking questions. Answer me. So if you fight Kakolia while having Robin, it was it would seem like she's singing wildfire. <laughs> Which I find kind of funny. <laughs> Project wrapped. Also, yes, Numpy, you don't need to worry. Also, there's a giant clocky statue here as well. Open that. Hard work pays off. And I climb this ladder. No. I got Robin yesterday at 59 pity. I was guaranteed, so I didn't think I would have gotten her that quick. So I don't have a lot of trace materials right now. I'm still building here. 
<laughs> yeah, probably the most, uh, the second most annoying thing in this game is trace farming. You need a lot of freaking traces in this game. Okay, there's our last gear piece. We've gathered all the missing parts. Let's hurry back. We don't want to keep Big Ticker waiting. Let me just make some stairs first for us. Wait, where does this go? Uh, okay, we'll do the other pieces first, actually. What? Oh, I need to attach the other ones first. Am I being dumb right now? What? I thought this was supposed to go up here. Uh, what? Oh, wait, no. One of these goes... Wait, no, no, no. That, that's not it. That's not it. Oh, you go here. Duh. Then you go here. Then you go here. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Just had a brain fart moment for a second there. I, I was just completely confused. You go here. There we go. Up you go. You go here too. You go... Right about there. All right. There we are. And uh, I think that should be like most of the chests in this area completed. Well, this this part of the area, at least. We still got like one more try to go through. Um, I'll just TP back up there. Yep. Here you go. This sudden surge of joy. It's working. Tick tock. Next, we just need to enter its emoscape, help connect its pathways, and we're done. Up. Oh, let's go. All right. This one's actually like a mandatory puzzle, so uh, let's do our best here. Okay, these are connected. Uh, okay, you go in a straight line there. Uh, oh. Oh, wait, is that not connected? Um, am I not lining this up right? Wait. Nope. Wait a minute. Uh, how do I do this? No, I need to put it here. And it's like the bridge across, unless... No, the mirror's only ref reflecting this side, so... Hmm. I thought for sure that would be it. Okay, maybe here. Uh... Ah... Not quite there yet. Damn, almost there. Ah, oh, come on, are you kidding me? Wait, maybe if I do it like this. There we go. Okay, the blue thing was just a red herring. What the fuck? Uh. Since it's come down to this, I have to use clockwork. Calm down! Okay, now it can continue as normal. Alright. Alright, you go here, you go there. And. Ah, straight line! Huzzah! Oh, shoot. I didn't mean to skip the last one, but alright. <laughs> yeah, I'm assuming if you did the other one, it's just you play as Hanu, like, the whole time. Meanwhile, if you go to the time one, you play the clocky puzzles. Go forth, my friends! With a <laughs> all the dream tickers and I will cheer for you! <laughs> yeah, if only therapy was this easy. <laughs> it's all done! Victory's in sight! Let's head to the final stage. 
All right, last one. Last date of ours before we save the entirety of Panicani. Congratulations to both of you. Oh, you've overcome all obstacles and proven yourselves. But, uh, unfortunately, there is only one who can be Panacone's festive superstar. Ah, uh, crap, do I have to battle Firefly? In the final stage, you will face the defending champion. Wait, no. If you <laughs> fail, you will lose the opportunity to become the festive superstar. I'm gonna fight Argenti, aren't I? Uh, I, I just know. Welcome to the 33rd <laughs> Scorch Sand Festival's Thursday. Okay, you don't need to repeat that again. Season, sponsored by Soul Glad. Sponsored by Soul Glad? Superstar showdown. Superstar showdown. Let's do this. Okay. Wait, I actually got to choose? He didn't even tell me the options. Is there like only one stage available? Oh, there's two. Oh, okay. Arena to arena. What's the difference? I, I guess we'll go with one then. Yeah, hey, what the heck? He didn't even tell me who was going to be in each arena. <laughs> Different bosses? Okay, just a different stage, that's all. Okay, then I'll just go one then. We'll go with two uh, in that other side quest, but let's go in order here. Take victory in the Superstar Showdown. I hope I picked a one of our- Yep! <laughs> yep! <laughs> There's our boy. No way. I think I just saw someone. <laughs> Extraordinary. All right, Argenti. I've been waiting for you to show up in Panacone. There's our man. Hey, been a while. What? Is it not? Is this not voiced? Oh, it's not voiced. Are you kidding me? Oh, come on. Could they not get back Argenti's Ar majestic voice? Damn it. Please wait, my beautiful ladies. By the glorious light of beauty, I never thought I would see you again. In such turbulent times, your kind faces are a spring's gentle breeze, bringing solace to my scorched heart. Are you... a knight of beauty? What the fuck? Firefly's voice, but Argenti isn't? Aw, come on. So, the red hair contestant is you all along. Will you be participating in the Charmy Festival as well? Yeah, I'll say this. Aw, goddammit. Oh, come on, really? Was Ar Argenti's voice actor not available or something? Like, it should be voice. If Firefly's saying stuff here, it shouldn't... This must be, like, bugged or something. Ah, boo. Why? God damn it. Hear ye. The rosy glow of beauty has rendered you speechless. What an honor. Upon hearing the impeding festivities, I commanded the one and only to bring me to Panacone with full haste. Alas, in the castles unguarded by the beauty, disorder prevails. Thus my passage was delayed by tending to the sick and injured. Fortunately, the mini rabbit mech pilot, the stray cat duelist, galactic ninja, and quad drive intel intellectron, along with 32 other souls in distress, all emerged from their predicaments and safe and sound. I, I then let them all to revel in the harmony with the countless other splendid beings. Is this a beauty? It's dazzling. You're quite the savior, aren't you? I'm busy saving the world, can you please make way? I do not deserve such praise. Unfortunately, that dashing IPC ambassador, whose radiance matches that of a beautiful peacock, remains in a woeful state. Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, what? You've met Aventurine? <laughs> How I wish he too could partake in this splendid occasion. Okay, let's get back to business. Since fate has brought us together, it stands to reason that you both seek the accolade of the audition's victor, correct? Though upon arrival, I was once mistaken for a towering silver-armored fugitive with red fiery flames due to my lack of eloquence. Uh, yeah, um, uh, yeah, really wonder who that should be. <laughs> yeah, I I'm so puzzled. Why is this not voiced? This has to be, like, either bugged or Argenti's VA was not available. You sound more like Dr. Ratio. Oh, okay, uh, right, I forgot to read this last part. It matters not, for all these trials stem from the land of dreams' beauty. What matters is now that I stand before you, our paths have crossed. I, Argenti of the Knights of Beauty, am humbly requesting for a battle in the name of the Code of Chivalry with you both. If I am fortunate enough to emerge victorious, kindly grant me passage to the crown of victory and recognize that Idrila, the beauty, is the most peerless beauty of them all. Alright, let's see this. Bear witness. Dear friends, please be ready yourself for the beauty. 
<laughs> oh, hell yeah. Argenti's battle theme again? Fuck yeah. Argenti. Argenti, not Argenti. <laughs> My bad. Oh, I fucking love this team. Yes, this is yes. a much welcome no, surprise. The measure of truth, or maybe I'll take it off. Yeah, I love this team so much. Hedge your bets. Bum bum bum. Zero bum bum bum. Yeah, I had this music as in my part of car for a while. It is so so good. Unfortunately, it seems like I'm wrecking Argenti's ass right now. Real shame that we only hear these boss like themes only once, and, like in, like the first time you face them. Like I would love for this scene to play when you like you fight him in simulated universe. Oh. <laughs> Okay, I guess Argenti's battle theme is too majestic that Robin can't override it. That's okay, though. I love this theme so much. All in the name of beauty. Pure beauty. Holy 30k. Okay, I'm sorry, Argenti, but uh, yeah, you never were meant to win this battle. That's enough. I've come to greet the sincerity of the cause. I yield. Beautiful! Beautiful! Truly a captivating contest! It is through you that I realize to uphold the honor of Idrila. I must further hone my skills. What a beautiful lesson indeed! Go forth, my dear friend, a uh, beautiful miss. The audition's crown is yours to claim. I shall remain here, gazing from afar as you bask in the limelight, joining in the audience in offering you the most heartfelt cheers and applause. We don't have much time. May fate allow us to meet again, Knight of Beauty. Uh, in that case, I, I didn't mean to skip let's that. make our way to the end. Okay, we're finally, we're finally here. With talent. I hope we make it in time. I just checked YouTube. Japanese uh, voice have Argenti lines. Then what the hell then? It, it must be like an oversight on their part to forget to include Argen uh, Argenti's like English voice lines here. Ah, damn it. It's a shame we can't replay these missions. Yeah, hopefully they update this. Go forth. The champion sage belong to the both of you. Bask in the glory you deserve. God, I love Argenti. <laughs> uh, Argenti. Keep mispronouncing his name, I'm sorry. But yeah, I love him so much. I wish he would like show in more of these quests. <laughs> He's such a delight to be around. Damn it, uh, why'd they, why'd they have to mess up and not include Argenti's voice lines? Man. This is this is why they have to add like mission replay. I would love to do that like part of the quest again. Okay, but it's time to finish up this whole beauty pageant. The yeah, Argenti. Keep mispronouncing his name. You have to pronounce the G. Like, really pronounce a G. <laughs> yeah! Finish! Pass through the path of superstars to reach the Panacani Grand Theater. Oh, and here are all my adoring fans. Let me go and kill you all. Yeah! Also, sticker. Whoa! Hello! Wait, is that? <laughs> Wait, that's me! That's me on the on the picture right there! Oh shit! Uh, wait, where's Firefly though? Why is it just me? <laughs> oh, and we're gonna go down on the interviews table. <laughs> Congratulations to the both of you on becoming the festive superstars of this year's Charmony Festival. Uh. Before entering the Grand Theater. Sunday? The what? I, on behalf of the organizers, extend my sincere congratulations uh -oh. to you, wishing you joy under their radiance. Uh, what are you doing here? You've already worked things out as the Dream Master. <laughs> All I get are sincere congratulations. Where are my stellar dates? <laughs> <laughs> e 
Your endeavors are worthy of extra recognition, and I've taken steps to ensure that. However, this reward is not a material one. Uh oh. But rather the opportunity for an open and honest communication between us. Honest, you say? As previously promised, my sister, Mr. Yang, and I have met with the Dream Master. We delved into the truth about Penacony and its Stellaron, and have come to a consensus. Both I and the Oak family cannot acquiesce to your request. Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah, wait, where's Robin? What did you do to her? Just as expected. Damn it, Sundays. You, you just have to be freaking stubborn, don't you? We acknowledge the perspective of you, Nameless. Penacony does require change, but not as you propose. The planet of festivities cannot and will not revert to a place characterized by chaos, disorder, or anarchy. Through your journey of overcoming obstacles, you must have glimpsed the essence of that era. The vulnerable ruthlessly eliminated, equality non-existent, common folk living precarious lives, eking out a dreary existence. Mm. Ultimately, only heroes like yourselves manage to achieve success. But I would dare ask, if you did not possess the special status of having a uh -oh. Stellaron, and you were but an anonymous and frail member among the masses, which Penacony would you prefer? Reality. A dystopia for the survival of the fittest, or a sweet dream paradise for all? There's nothing wrong with being the fittest. A sweet dream paradise doesn't sound too bad. I don't know, why are you asking me? <laughs> um... There's nothing wrong with being the fittest. That's not the point. Don't let him mislead you. Oh, right. Whoops. I didn't read that dialogue properly there. Okay, both options were bad. Mr. Sunday, even if the members of the Oak family can't fully agree on what to do about the Stellaron, now's not exactly the time to be holding an extensive discourse about Penacony's past and future, is it? The Stellaron issue concerns the life and death of everyone on Penacony. If anyone has a better suggestion, the crew is more than willing to listen. Also, it'd be best to tell us the ins and outs of that meeting. This way, we'll at least know what Welt and Miss Robin are dealing with, and the reason why they failed to make our appointment. Ah, Navigator. That is precisely my intention. Uh oh. With all present, Let's begin by discussing the details of that meeting. Let's talk about our tribulations and choices, our ideals and beliefs, uh -oh. and our final course of action. The only path to take. Uh-oh. What's going down? A while ago... You mean to say that for the longest time there have been scoundrels who would use this the Charmody Festival that I have bequeathed to the masses as a tool to realize their ambition? Indeed, Dream Master. Once the Charmony Festival begins, the Stellaron's powers, along with the song, will be broadcast across the entire planet of Penacony. And then everyone in their dreams will be unable to awaken. Hmm. This is indeed surprising to me. The dreamscape is maintained by the collective effort of the Oh god, don't tell me that's Sunday's goal. If someone were to use the Charmony Festival to recklessly disseminate the power of the Stellaron, this individual must hold a position of great authority. Do you have any suspects? I'd like to ask, did you really not know of the Stellaron's existence? Hmm. <sighs> I would, I would have, have never, never thought, thought that, that this nameless would point the spear at me. Oh, joy. Quite astonishing indeed. If I have offended, the Astral Express extends its sincere apologies. 
but the current circumstances are dire and leave no room for meticulous inquiry. We're doing this out of concern for the dreamscape's safety. So, if you could, please alleviate our concerns. Dream Master, it's just to prove that the Charmony Festival has nothing to do with the Stellaron. If we're being overly cautious, I will return to the stage to offer tribute in song, just per the arrangement. <sighs> Sunday. Uh oh. Robin, I've watched you uh -oh. grow up. And know your dispositions like the back of my That fucking ringing was like perfectly timed or something. What the hell? Can surely be lauded as their most devout advocates. I already know your resolve. The magnitude of this matter is enormous and cannot be taken lightly. Since Mr. Yang has asked with such earnestness, I will personally respond in kind. If there is a need, the entire Oak family will be mobilized to heed your call. Someday, might I ask you to beseech them to cast their light unto me and question me in their stead so that no lies may be concealed? I will do as you command. Robin, could I entrust you to be present as a witness? To document, document the, the truth, truth and to, to proclaim, proclaim my innocence so that, that all slander may be utterly dispelled. I will do as you command. May thy will be carried out on earth oh. just as it is in the heavens. And then Wells just left out of this entirely. <laughs> Triple faced soul, please sear his tongue and palms with a hot iron so that he will not be able to fabricate lies and make false vows. Let us begin. Uh, this again. There is nothing else to prepare. The same fucking shit Aventurine was through. Understood. Question. Have you devoted your life to your god? Never worshipping other gods? Naturally. Do you love your god as you do yourself? Always heeding their admonishments. Naturally. Have you strayed from the path expected by your god, betraying their name? Never. Have you ever been inordinate with your asks of your god, coveting more than the foundation of the creation itself? Never. Then, a final question. Yeah. Do you swear to fulfill all vows, past, present, and future? With the Eon as my witness, if I do not deliver on my words, or if I renege on my vows, may I be cursed in accordance with divine law. They have seen your faith, and have endorsed your faith. With this, it can be evidenced... Just... A moment. Uh. What is it, Mr. Yang? I have another question I hope to have answered. To my understanding, the family's harmony and prosperity have never relied on so-called divine laws. The god you both mentioned. Are they truly Shipei? Oh, shit. That's such a good question, actually. We don't actually know, like... Hmm, would the Harmony really do shit like this? Mr. Yang should know that those belonging to the family toil together as if they were kin, embracing solidarity and unity under their light. All duplicity is laid bare before the Harmony. Such a delicate and complex symphony. Which other god could perfectly harmonize this, if not for the Great One, Shibe. Perfectly harmonize it. Therein lies the problem. It isn't an outsider lurking in the shadows who changed the harmony, but a dissonance that has surreptitiously emerged from within this very symphony itself. In the distant past, there existed an eon. Mm. One flick of the wrist, they crafted the laws of the cosmos. Their followers formed the Beyond the Sky Choir, 
spreading solemn and reverent hymns throughout the universe. Later, they fell. The route traversed by this eon clashed with the harmony, ultimately being absorbed and fused into it. The chorus that once reverberated across worlds fell silent, and when it echoed anew, it was transformed into the hymn of harmony. Huh. Though an eon may perish, paths with no masters still linger. In the all-forgiving harmony, echoes of bygone dissonance may subtly arise. Mr. Yang, being overly astute can be a detriment. Especially when you find yourself alone. Hey. And without allies. Hey, don't threaten Grandpa now. He has a black hole in his cane he can use any time. So this is how it is. For the sake of our grand cause, Sunday, please afford these two an opportunity to rest. Uh-oh. What? Oh, you dickhead, Sunday. You bitch! Sorry, Robin. It's just you. I did not wish for you to know this. It's a pity that things have turned out this way. So, this is the true reason I can't sing? The shadow that envelops Pinakuni is actually... We were never children of the Harmony. What? Our ideal paradise could not have been crafted by Shipe. True bliss can only be guaranteed by the one who transcends the many. Within the foundation of law, humanity establishes civilization, and through harmony, we obtain order. Order, fuck, you follow Ina. No fucking wonder. Unbelievable. To think that there would be remnants of the order on Penacony. I even questioned that at first. It's just like, no, no way the Harmony does shit like this. Oh no, you, eventually you have like six hours left to live. The Harmony wouldn't, that goes against the very idea of Harmony. Fuck. Don't worry. I just gave them some time alone to ponder their fates. You should know that these actions make you an enemy of the Astral Express. Should we need to stand against the Nameless, it would only be myself and the Oak family involved. But we haven't reached that point yet. Your efforts for the justice of Panacone are evident to everyone and have been widely observed. You want to talk terms of us? Stop being around the bush and get to the point. Give us back Mr. Yang right now. Oh, I intend to. But that hinges on the outcome of this negotiation. Oh, great. We're going to blackmail. Oh. If it is the order that drove you to imprison Welt and Robin, and you're using them to coerce our compliance, then there'll be no point in entertaining any type of discussion. You're mistaken, Miss Himiko. They are in very safe hands, and just as the family has always proclaimed, no one can be harmed in the dreamscape, least of all in the beautiful new world belonging to the Order. Panacone and the entire universe have witnessed far too much innocent bloodshed. The strong wield their blades against the weak, and the victors push the vanquished to the brink of life. Natural selection. The world abides by this principle, establishing the well-being of humanity atop the corpses of the downtrodden. Only we, we have striders of the order, I possess the power to put an end to this farce. So, so does that makes the question: Does Harmony even have anything to do with this planet? Do they? Do they just unknowingly? Does everybody just believe that they just? I, I, oh, there's so much I s still want to know. So you've decided to resurrect a dead Eon? No one's ever done such a thing. If Miss Himiko is interested, let's draw back the veil and speak candidly. 
I've always firmly believed that people can understand one another through peaceful means. I'm willing to divulge the unembellished truth as to the intentions of the Order's path striders, so that you will make better judgment for the Astral Express, for Panacone, and for this stretch of the universe. Words can hardly do justice to the beauty of that ideal. So, come with me, everyone. Let us retrace our steps and see once again where this road leads. Oh boy, <laughs> where do you want me to go? Huh? Where do you go? Welcome. Uh, this isn't oh fuck, I just realized the whole floor is an eye. That's literally Ina's eye. Right there. The reason the scenery before you remains unchanged is because your consciousness has drawn on similar concepts to fill in the gaps. You've imprisoned us? Who in their right mind would expose their inner self like this? Did you do the same to Welt? It's a tuning process. Stronger in effect and more draining on the mind. The gray-haired guest has experienced it before, so she should understand what it entails. Tuning allows you to intuitively grasp my feelings, which also means that I cannot hide anything from you. Now, everyone, Please look at the huge screen. The road we once took begins here. From this point on, uh. you will witness the numerous decisions I've faced. I've selected a portion of these to share with you. Well, the birdies. I believe after going through similar predicaments, you'll be able to better understand my thoughts. This is important. I'll let you decide things for yourself. Okay, so your choices matter here. Okay. Let's begin. The first decision. A story about a baby bird. And we've heard this all before. When Robin and I were very young. We were victims of the Stellaron disaster. And the family's Mr. Gopher Wood, who would later become the dream master of Penacony, saw that we siblings had no one to turn to and took us in later on. Robin and I lived the time with nary a care in the world. One day, after dinner, while my younger sister and I were lounging about in Mr. Gopher Wood's yard, we spotted a fledgling Charmony dove all on its own. Hmm. I don't think Jurassic would change, but your answer will not won't affect anything but his POV, you will. Huh. Okay. That baby bird was tiny. It didn't even have all of its feathers, and it couldn't sing. When we found it, it was already on its last breath, having fallen into a shrub. Probably abandoned by its parents, we decided to build a nest for it right there and then. However, thinking back, that winter was unusually cold, with fierce winds at night in the yard, not to mention the many poisonous bugs and wild beasts in the vicinity. It was clear that if we left the fledgling in the yard, it stood no chance of surviving until spring. So, I suggested we take it inside, place it on the shelf by the window, and asked the adults to fashion a cage for it. We decided that when it regained its strength enough to spread its wings, we would release it back into the wild. The tragic part, something that we'd never considered was that this bird's fate had already been determined long before this moment. Its destiny was determined by our momentary whim. Now, I pass the power of choice to you all. Faced with this situation... Oh boy. What choice would you make? Stick to the original plan, and build a nest with soft net where the Charmony Dove fell. Or build a cage for it and feed it, giving it the utmost care from within the warmth of a home. I eagerly await your answer. Ah, oh, shit, I actually have to choose here. Hang on, let me pick up this disc real quick. <laughs> Sorry. Hmm. Firefly? I can't decipher his intentions right now, but... Based solely on that question? No, no, no. I would probably choose to build that dove a cage. 
Nope, that is what Sunday wants. Even if I was gonna release it back into the sky, it'd have to be strong enough to fly first. If I left it where I found it, I fear it'd never get the chance to fly ever again. Hmm. What would you, Himiko? It looks like he really has no intention of imprisoning us. If it's just a quiz, I suppose it's fine to humor him. Back to the question. I would personally choose to build the little Charmony Dove a cage. Really? Wow, you all are saying the cage option. No special reason. I do think that a fledgling should have the right to fly into the sky. But if it can't even live to that point, then there's nothing to talk about to begin with. Hmm. And then what about you, Miss March? <laughs> what exactly is his deal? But fine, I'll answer, I guess. If it were me, I guess I. All of you want to build a cage, build okay? Cage for the little Charmony dub. After all, leaving it there, it's bound to get hurt by wild animals or something, and that'd just be too sad. Man. I'll be honest, folks, this this story is like very much related to like one of my own experiences. Like back when I was like six or something or eight, I forget. My dad actually brought like an injured bird back home. He did. And then we, um, yeah, we, we also subsequently put it in the cage, but I also tried to feed it back to health. But then two days after we brought it home, it died. I, I remember being so sad for like a whole ass week when that happened. Like for real, this actually happens to me IRL, so... Hmm. Yeah. As much as I don't want to go Sunday's option, I would put it in the cage and just nurse it back to health. Yeah, we named that bird Chirpy. Chirpy was only with us for like all but two days. Yeah, I, I was fucking heartbroken when he, when he died. I, I'm gonna pick with the cage option. That's just what I would choose. Choose nurture with care in a, in a cage, or build a bird nest on the spot. I couldn't good conscience just let a yeah just let a, a bird die like that. Hmm. Or build a cage for it, feed it, and give it the utmost care within the warmth of a home. I'm gonna pick this option. I'm happy to see that you made a choice similar to ours. If your mind is made up, let me reveal the outcome of this choice. Well, we didn't. <laughs> we already know. I saw your backstory. <laughs> we passionately nursed it back to health, preparing only the best food for it every day. We even preened its feathers. Later, on the day that Robin left Penacony, we opened the cage door and let it fly back into the sky. Yeah, I kind of like this actually. It's just like asking super philosophical questions. I like, I kind of like these questions. I watched it for a long while by the window, probably about three or so days. In those three long days, the little Charmony Dove tried again and again to spread its wings to fly into the sky. But fell to the ground. Only to keep trying. That's actually super good too, because it's like, yeah, it makes you question your own conscience and like what kind of person you are, and if you're truly making the right choices. Finally, on the hundred and thirty-seventh attempt, it succeeded. But its attempt did not go perfectly. After flying unsteadily for a while, it fell to the ground. Unable to grasp the direction of the air currents. The fall shattered its wings. It writhed helplessly in my embrace. But it was all for naught. Finally succumbing to a painful demise. And in that instant, our tender care, our given love and hopes, they all became the inevitable push that sent it to its death. 
Thunder believes in, every in keeping everyone safe and nobody dies, while Robin believes in personal freedom and decision. Yeah, kind of like the theming of this. It's just... Yeah, freedom, but danger, or safe security, but you're imprisoned, in a sense. Could have worded that it better, but... Next, let us head to the second decision. This time, it's the story of a dream chaser. But yeah, I, I love the philosophical, like, <laughs> uh, like take this uh, game is turning into. Like, I, I love this turn. It's just, like, psychological questions and whatnot. This story happened when I was appointed as Bronze Melodia. Okay, so this we haven't heard about. exclusive to the Oak family. Charged with listening to the problems and vexations of dreamscape residents and providing them with the relevant guidance. It was during that period that I had the opportunity to hear voices from all corners of the dreamscape. Joy. Sorrow. Arrogance. Regret. The complex tapestry of human nature that formed the world. And I was fortunate to catch a glimpse of it. He was a dream chaser. And an illegal stowaway. Hmm. Just like oh no, we have seen this. He came to Panacone in search of a better life. Except that, to most people, the price he paid... I suppose you could say it was everything. Duh. Yeah, this is... Wait, this is the guy that sold his own kids to kind of Panacone, right? He told me. I sold everything I could at Yeah, home. fuck this man. The house, the land, even his two children. He said he could not afford to raise them. And that, at least, they could eat if they lived as slaves. No. <laughs> fuck no. He had a plan in place. He would buy back his children once he had made his fortune. That's a terrible fucking choice. Panacone's beautiful dream. You make a choice like that, you have no right to be a parent. His plan to smuggle himself was somewhat clumsy. And he was sniffed out by those pig-headed hounds. After hearing the Dream Chaser's story, I immediately appealed to the Bloodhound family to cease their pursuit. That way, at least he could live peacefully. Uh. But I was... Still too naive to the ways of the world. I did not anticipate that what I thought was a kind gesture would later lead to dire consequences. Uh oh. What I'll happened? Tell you the outcome soon. Okay. For now, I'd like yeah, leave to us on a cliffhanger. Choice. Will you do as I did and try to convince the Bloodhound family to stop their pursuit? So that the dream chaser may live peacefully and realize his wishes? Or will you remain silent? Leaving him to languish while the hounds are hot on his heels. Until his inevitable judgment arrives. I look forward to everyone's decisions. Hmm. Who knows? Perhaps they might even alter the outcome of this tragedy. I am... I would not. I would not let the guy... Like, go off easy. I'm going to leave him to, like, the wolves. Like, he he, he's, he needs to pay for the price of his sins. What do you all think? It seems illegal stowaways are really quite common on Penacone. Yeah, we got them right- we got one right over there. <laughs> I don't think he deserves any sympathy at all. Yeah. He sold his kids to chase a dream. Even if he intended to go back for them, it's still insanely irresponsible. With that thought, there's only one choice. Yep. Let the Bloodhound send him back home. I'm glad you're with me in this one, March. He deserves to be punished. What do you, Firefly? This question... Surely it has some connection to the baby bird story. And this connection is precisely the breakthrough Sunday aims to use to persuade us. I'd probably choose to ask the Bloodhounds to cease their pursuit. Really? Okay, I guess we're in disagreement, Firefly. A dream chaser story. If I acted out of kindness, I would probably ask the Bloodhounds to stop their pursuit and lend them a hand. But what 
cruel repercussion would this choice result in? I think... Sunday must have been deeply impressed by the limitations of the strong defending the weak through this incident. I see what you mean and what you're saying, guys and child. Like, if I choose this, I'm siding with the order, like keeping order of everything. Meanwhile, this is like, I guess, kind of the harmony side. Like, option. To just, you know, to be like kind to all, including those who have done terrible things. Yeah, out of rational, out of rational thought or out of kindness. I'm going to go with my rational gut here. Remain silent throughout. It seems you, like me, are pondering whether a different choice could have led to a better outcome. Sadly, his fate would only be more tragic. Say he never gets caught. He would only die from delirium. The methods with which illegal stowaways enter dreams are unorthodox. Not flawless like the hotels. Living in the dreamscape would be a mere pipe dream. Should he be apprehended? Could the hounds afford to turn a blind eye? The answer is a definitive no. They couldn't bear the resulting consequences, and thus wouldn't dare extend a helping hand. As to your choice, I once again offer my heartfelt apologies. Mm. Next comes the third and final decision. Wait, did you? Wait, what? You, you, you said it would reveal what actually happened. What? Oh, no, I guess he did get apprehended in the end. Wait, no, no, you didn't because you chose to let him go. What happened to that man? What, what was the outcome of that? Just because someone chooses, agrees with the order doesn't mean we're bad or anything or agree with Sunday. Yeah, I'm just going out of my own guts. I'm not agreeing with Sunday or anything. I don't agree with his whole philosophy of keeping everyone in the dream, but... Rationally, if you ask me this question outside of this game, I would probably answer like the same as I do right now. And the story this time... is my own. I guess he only reveals what actually happened if you chose what he chose. Do you want to know before we continue? Yeah, I do want to know. He gets rich and forgets about his kids? Oh yeah, fuck that then. Yeah, yeah. So I'm glad I chose the option to fucking... Mm, yeah, make him pay for his sins. Yeah, I don't trust people like that to keep their word. Not in the slightest. God, fucking... What a terrible fucking person. Ugh, I, I can't believe Sunday just let him go like that. All right, but here's our third and final choice. Happened the day I was appointed the Oak family head. At that time, Mr. Gopherwood was the current dream master. And as for his wish, we had a private conversation. What surprised me was that the dream master had only come to deliver a letter to me. He let me read its contents, and it was a letter from my sister. Okay. The letter contained the usual pleasantries, anecdotes from her travels, nothing out of the ordinary. Just as I started wondering how this letter related to our discussion, the Dream Master began to speak. Do you know who wrote this letter? My sister, of course. But why would you personally visit me to hand me a letter from my sister containing mere trivialities? To help you grasp the full scope of this issue. Do you know where Robin is at this moment? From what the letter indicates, she must be in Caspelina 8, correct? She's touring there right now. Correct. Has she mentioned anything about a stray bullet? Oh. A stray bullet? What? What? A war has broken out on that planet. Oh, crap. It is because of this very reason that Robin chose this destination. To spread the word of the Harmony. And to save the lives of that planet. 
she personally made for the front lines. She hoped to ease the people's suffering with song, and was willing to brave mortal danger to deliver the IPC's medical supplies. Unfortunately, Shed. bullets show no such compassion. Is she all right? If the operation was successful, she should probably be recovering in the field hospital. By the eon above, the bullet struck her neck. Ah. Yet possibly as a reward for her consistent deeds of heart. In the fucking neck? It didn't hit any vital arteries. How? Once you've attended to your outstanding tasks, it'd be advisable to write her back as soon as possible. God, I guess about just grazed her neck. No, it struck her neck directly. How? How do you even live after that? Holy shit. Those damn savages. I'll pack my bags right away. My gratitude for bringing this to my attention, Mr. Gopherwood. Now you understand why she always wears such elaborate neck ornaments, don't you? Is that actually why? To cover up the bullet wounds? Robin. It's all in the past, so please don't worry. I share this in the meager hope that you will understand the harmonies, limitations, and predicament. As grandiose as the strong defending the weak sounds, many times, it is nothing more than wishful thinking. Likewise, I've prepared one last question. Mm -hmm. Last choice. But rest assured, this choice will not have any grave consequences, because this is merely a figure. Yeah, we'll look at Robin after this, just to see a nightmare her model that has haunted me through countless nights. Hmm. If you ever had the opportunity to make a choice like I did, would you still support Robin's journey on the path of harmony? Support Robin to go on her journey. Stop Robin from going on her journey. Hang on. Yeah, she has this whole, like, neck thing. That's probably like, covering up a bullet wound or something. That is actually, wow. Hmm. Yeah, this is a hard question. It's like, yeah, helping people's nice and all, but Robin could possibly die from helping people. Hmm. What do you all think? Miss Robin's courage is admirable. And here I was thinking she was just another superstar celebrity. But the fact that she's also Mr. Sunday's younger sister? No, I doubt he'd wish harm on his own flesh and blood, no matter how grand the ambition. What were you, Himiko? I often feel like I've dreamt of similar scenes on certain nights. In the dream, I see blurry faces. I don't know who they are, but I sympathize with all of them, fighting for survival against some unfathomable force. Wait. Wait a minute. <laughs> I see blurry for instance, I don't know who they are, but I sympathize with all of them. Fighting for survival against... The Honkai? What? Oh, fuck you, Hoyo. Their confusion and fear are lucid to me. But I also remember... Yeah, that's a, that's a H.I. third reference right there. Just like Miss Robin. Never let you go. No, no, no. Sunday's question leaves you puzzled. You should find the answer from your own experiences. With each trailblaze, dangers and tribulations will surely follow. But would you ever back away? Would you stop March and Don Hung from reaching their next destination? I believe you have an answer of your own in your heart. I think I've made up my mind, yeah, but I'll ask March first for her opinion. Happened 
to Miss Robin. The strong defending the weak is a great mantra, but if I had to pay such a price, I... I don't know what I'd do. Hmm. Well, this is a predicament. What would you guys choose in a situation like this? Yeah, I, I've uh, looked up Robin's E6 on my phone. Yes, it is true. Like one of one of you guys told me. In her E6 portrait, it's not so clear here because I don't have her E6. She does have like a little circular like mark on her neck, which is probably the bullet wound. That is such insane attention to detail. Yeah, look up her E6 portrait. You can definitely see like a faint circle on her neck. It's not super obvious, but once you see it, yeah, you'll know that's a bullet wound. Let her go, but put her inside Sam's armor. <laughs> Damn, I let her go. You can't trap a bird in the cage. I let her go. In many situations, stopping people usually results in the opposite always happening. I let her go. I let her go. Yeah, I think we're all in agreement here that we should just let her go. Like, obviously, maybe I'll be there to support alongside with her. But yeah, you can't stop a bird from escaping the cage. I, I think, like, stopping, trying to stop Robin will only lead it to the opposite effect. Where Robin will try to leave, like, illegally or something. And then we'll end up, like, probably in a worse fate for her. Yep. I'm gonna go with supporting Robin. Choice made. I see. I am now aware of everyone's stances. Raising these questions merely serves to illustrate one point. The plight of Panacone cannot be salvaged by the harmony. The true foundation for a sweet dream paradise can only be established through the order where the strong govern the weak. I know the suffering of being tormented, the turmoil of losing your way, how sorrow and even despair set in when matters don't work out. All of this causes me unending pain because this is not what happiness is at all. Mm -hmm. We must teach the weak how to live a happy life. And this life isn't some noble propriety that the upper crust preaches, but in definitive terms, a way of survival that belongs to everyone. So what is your definition of living a happy life? Huh. Good question. Human consciousness is fundamentally an illusion. A cage known as self-worth. People lured in by this illusion make mistakes, yet still ask that external influences bear the burden. When one mistake after the next permeates the masses, they become impossible to trace. Thus, the amassing of these individual cages culminate to form a prison. A place dictated only by the rule of survival of the fittest. Nature is always accompanied by predation and sacrifice. Its antithesis is known as order. Order. That is what I want to do. Unite people's happiness under the banner of order. They won't need to make bitter choices any longer, nor face the weaknesses of humanity. They can cast aside their primal instincts to build a haven for mankind. God, the other, you're right, Landers. Yeah, he's seeming more and more like yeah, the, the final palace ruler of uh, P5R, if any of you have played that. Simply describing thoughts is far too abstract. So allow me to provide a simple example. As you all may know, there are societal norms like weekends and long weekends that exist on some worlds. During these hard-earned rest days, people are given the chance to extricate themselves from the stresses of everyday life, allowing a certain tranquility to return to their souls. And it is only on these days that people do not have to adhere to the law where the strong prey on the weak. They can live out their lives happily during these brief intermissions. It's just a pity 
that two or three days are still too fleeting compared to the span of a lifetime. From where I stand, society's ideal system should be seven rest days. What? Following Sunday, there should ensue a second, a third, and indeed an infinite procession of Sundays. Is that why your name is Sunday? This should be the face of the new world. Idyllic, eternal, peaceful days. And thus, mm. every person can return to their base selves in this utopia. Some gaze in reverence at the stars, pouring their whole beings into calculating the distance between us and the isolated world of Pagana. Meanwhile, some seek refuge in quiet corners, holding one another, unencumbered by the chains of unwelcome obligations. There would be no need to bear the hardships of reality. Only in this way can humanity face the inevitable end with the purest of spirit. Mm. Living a life of dignity. This is what it is to live in bliss. Yeah, I would think my younger self would agree with him, honestly. <laughs> I think my younger self would just like be like, Wow, we don't have to go do work or school at all? Hell yeah, I'm supporting you. But now that I'm a bit older and a bit more mature, I understand that. Yeah, this is not the way to live at all. Miss Firefly, you who are stricken with entropy loss syndrome. Oh, you know that too? You of all would surely understand this. Yeah, freak, Sunday's pretty much like Aizen level, levels of intelligence right now. He just knows everything. And the only thing surpassing him is his own messiah complex. Like a flawless theory. <sighs> hmm. But what is the price to attain all this? The cost is minute, merely a personal and eternal sacrifice. Eternal sacrifice, yeah, minute, yeah. Those don't go together. <laughs> Someone must remain trapped in solitary awakening until the end of the cosmos. No thanks. Wakening. Which means that this so-called paradise is still a dream. Stepping into this paradise means forsaking reality, correct? It is not forsaking, but transcending. Flesh, blood, sorrow, weakness. If the physical is the root of spiritual suffering, it is only logical that we defeat it. But in this supposed bliss, people won't have defeated their demons. The chance yeah. to overcome their tribulations would be forever lost to them. In other words, it is an escape. True, you're just running away from, from your problems just permanently. That's another way of understanding it. But there is no shame in escape. On the contrary, the seeds of escape exist in everyone's hearts. Yeah, but if you escape for too long, you just cease to grow as a person. You never grow at all without overcoming your own problems. You just remain the same. Which is honestly just kind of like death in, in my eyes. Don't you agree, Miss Firefly? And as to why we sleep? It is because we are afraid to awaken from our dreams. But this is not in conflict with the grand plan. Yeah, Sunday, you coping right now, my guy. Can we truly understand the frailty of human nature? And from there, show compassion and protection. I... I admit that you are a born leader. Your perspective on humanity brims with pessimism. Yet you express compassion for all. Even when your heart pities them. But unlike you, I live for the self. From my perspective, individuals making choices for themselves is their birthright. The want to escape may be innate in the weak. 
But whether they are weak or not. Exactly. It is not up to another to decide. Perhaps in your mind, you also view me as weak? <laughs> because I don't think so. Yeah, no. Since Miss Firefly has said her piece, the Astral Express will also naturally give you our answer. We'll leave it to you. Just as Mr. McHale instructed before. Tell him our choice. You got it. Actually, what? Wait, wait what did we do with Mr. McHale? What is this? Misha? Place? Does this place ring any bells, Misha? What the heck? I. I don't know. But I feel a sense of deja vu. What is this place? It's the realm within a dream bubble. This was left to the Astral Express. Oh, Atlas. what? But weirdly, when we entered it, it was completely empty. Wait, Misha was the key to entering the dream bubble. Okay. Dr. Edward from the Dreamscape sales store told me that dreams are formed from memories and a dream bubble can't take shape if its core is empty. So I thought you might be able to help us in unraveling this mystery, Misha. As a hotel doorman, you know Penacony best among us. Hmm. I... I don't know much about dream bubbles. But if you want to figure out what this mansion is, I'll do my best. I'm counting on you then. Uh, Himeko, I still don't get it. Why were you so sure that Misha had a connection with this dream bubble? Hmm. The keyholes in his eyes make sense? Oh, you're true, he does have keels in his eyes. I wasn't sure. It was just a hunch. But since Misha feels familiar with this place, my hunch might be correct. This place looks familiar. This place looks a little bit nostalgic. Uh, yeah, it's where we fought exactly. death. This is where you and Firefly yeah, huh? conquered death, which we now know as Dormancy. Considering its connection to Dreamflux Reef, it's not surprising it appeared here. The question now is, who brought you here? Based on the clues we have so far, it's unlikely to be that masked fool. So identifying them is crucial to us. We're drawing closer to the truth once more. Let's give Misha some time, as I believe he'll unveil the secret of this dream bubble. All right, but there are doors all over the place. Which one should we choose? Do you have any idea, Misha? Hmm. Mm. I guess... Maybe this way? Okay. Follow Misha around help him recover his memories. I'm not sure, but... Let's give it a try. Holy crap, he's hauling. Wait up. Wait, you managed to choose the right door on your first try? Oh. Weird. This place is quite different from the hotel. But I just, I feel like I've been here before and even lived here for a while. Yeah, I never actually noticed that before. Yeah, there's actually keyhole shaped pupils in his eyes. If I remember correctly, there should be a fireplace down that hallway. Cloggy and I used to sit by the fire listening to the crackling of firewood and and the room on the other side was oh yeah the toy room i loved that was misha's room toys from the box on the floor and making up stories for each of them hold on this doesn't make sense didn't i grow up in dreamflux reef so what is this place this could be a case of amnesia don't worry, Misha. Ah, uh, classic. It's for everyone to forget. So classic amnesia. Of the past. Those memories haven't vanished. They're just lying in the depths of your mind. We can surely get them back. Since this place seems familiar to you, why don't we explore a few more rooms and see if you can recall anything more? Yeah. Then let's check out the rooms I just mentioned. Okay. 
It is toy room. I've always questioned it. Whoa. Okay, that's creepy. Yeah, this toy room right here. I thought it always belonged to Mikhail, but it's Misha's? I heard some noises from the room. Origami Bird? That's a friend of mine. You and Origami Bird are friends? Yeah. It's a member of the Compass Crew. The Compass like Crew? Miss Mirror. Huh. And there's more than just one Origami Bird. They are a big family with lots of brothers and sisters <laughs> who look the same. Yeah, I found uh, most of them. <laughs> they follow Miss Mirror's orders and handle all sorts of jobs on the ship. They're the best sailors. Sailors? Can origami birds be sailors? Hey, in a dream, anything's possible, I guess. Could you tell us more about the compass, Misha? Oh, the one I used to freeze time. Bound for the new world. Clarky and his partners travel through layers of fog to the depths of the sea. Whenever there is danger, Clocky will use a compass and guide the ship in the right direction. That's a great story. But in the Panacone cartoon... Clocky and his partners have always lived in Dreamville and never ventured out, right? Huh? Oh, that does seem to be the case. Hmm. Weird. I... I clearly remember... Clocky arrived in the New World in the end. <laughs> Perhaps Clocky has a hidden past. Maybe he does. Let's go find him, actually. So, where has Clocky gone? Oh. Did he leave to protect Dreamville? Just like they, they did with Clocky. Hang on. I want to look around the room a bit. Whoa. This is an origami bird I made for you. Okay, I think that's all in this room. Miss Mirror. I've never heard of Miss Mirror before, have I? Hmm. Mikhail, that's the name? Now we all know him as the Watchmaker. So, who is he talking to? Do you know anything about it, Misha? I'm sorry. I don't know much about the Watchmaker. But, Mikhail... Anything special about that name? Mikhail... is... is what? Grandpa's name. You're Mikhail... What? You're Mikhail's grandson? Watchmaker's grandson? Wait, doesn't that mean he's the one who's giving Misha the ticket in the light cone? But we haven't heard anything about the Watchmaker having descendants. And the name Mikhail is not rare. Perhaps it's merely a coincidence. Could you tell us more about your grandpa, Mikhail? Yeah, sure. He was a seafarer who fearlessly ventured into mysterious seas and storms. He was always on the sea and had lots of friends who accompanied him on his travels. He didn't want me to call him Grandpa because that would make him sound old. Oh. He believed he was still young. The name Mikhail was given to him by his parents, Mihaly and Elise, both renowned seafarers. Every time he came back, He'd share his logbook with me and tell me about his adventures at sea. I want to become a great adventurer, just like him. So, make that makes sense, because now we know he's a nameless. It appears that the seafarer has nothing to do with the watchmaker. So, perhaps it's just a coincidence? No, March, piece it together. <laughs> so, where is your grandpa now? He went off on a new journey. And it's been... Quite a while since I last saw him. Oh. I think I hear the sound of. Oh, blood. poor boy. Oh no. You once mentioned there's a magnificent fountain up ahead. Oh, he doesn't know he's. No, isn't he dead? Didn't we just see his like body like at the top of? Look, there it is. Dream flux. Hmm. The water resembles a precious jewel embedded in the dreams of all seafarers every time i gaze at the shimmering lights beneath the waves it feels as though i'm back in this place standing by your side 
Have you recalled anything, Misha? Yeah. I saw these sentences in Grandpa's logbook. He used to say that despite the perils of the sea, whenever he stood on the deck in the afternoon, overlooking the sparkling waves, he would think of this fountain in front of his house. He often said that those moments felt like returning to his family's side. Hmm. And the difficulties at sea didn't seem quite as challenging. <sighs> you know, I quite understand such sentiments. Don't sigh or you start getting gray hair. You're talking like an elder. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I'm not an elder. I was just being a bit sentimental. Perhaps every adventurer far from home carries a fountain within their soul. Even though the other side of the sea remains shrouded in the unknown, the fountain in front of his house serves as a compass, leading him back to his cherished ones. Yeah, while Grandpa was at home, we would stand by the fountain and place the compass, a toy boat that I made, into the pool back then. I would ask him when I could go on adventures like him, and he would always laugh and say I was still too young. Oh, it seems this Mikhail is truly a seafarer and has nothing to do with the watchmaker. Yeah, based on Misha's recollections, mm. the scenes in the dream bubble appear to be his childhood memories. But this raises more questions. According to Misha, he was clearly born on an oceanic planet and led an ordinary life. With no connection to Penicone at all. Could this be... some sort of... metaphor? Mm -hmm. Perhaps the sea refers to the memory zone. I'm sorry. I don't know, but... My memories keep pouring out uncontrollably. Like water flowing from a fountain. Perhaps I'll... I'll remember more things if we go further. Hmm. Yeah, I'm still trying to piece together who this Mikhail really is. The opposite side, right? No. We should turn left here. I wish to share your burden. Huh? Something feels... Huh. About this place. This oh. I remember this court. Up ahead is Grandpa's study. It was in that room that I saw him the last time. Oh, oh, poor baby boy. Uh, what the hell? <laughs> what a shift in tone, the heck? <laughs> the atmosphere in this room feels totally different. Misha, you finally come! There's Clocky. <laughs> Clocky, you're here. Huh. Yeah. This is the room where we first met each other. Yeah, the complete tonal shift. He was just about to say goodbye to his grandpa and everything. <laughs> Are those books on the bookshelf logbooks left behind by that seafarer? Yeah. Whenever he came back, he placed a logbook on the bookshelf in his room. They contain records of his expeditions to every corner of the world. He described our world as a fountain. At some point, the sea started to gradually swallow up the land where people lived. To ensure that everyone had land to settle on, he had to continue exploring the sea and search for the source of the rising seawater. On that day, mm -hmm. he called me to his study, telling me that he was embarking on another journey. However, I could sense the gravity in his expression. It... It was the same look I had seen on my father's face before his final voyage. I asked him if I could go with him, 
But he said that my adventure lay elsewhere and told me to stay home and patiently await a certain sound at the door. What sound? He told me about a vast ocean in the sky. Hmm. An ocean of stars. Oh. He spoke of a train that transports children. With a train, you say? Far away. Traversing the sea of stars without ever stopping. He said that he knew the crew on the train. And that he had asked them to take me along. He said the journey I had always dreamed of would start there. A train? Could it be? Yeah, the express? It's... It's the Astral Express. I... I remember now. Oh, there we go. There's a connection. Of nameless who came to this world to resolve a disaster caused by a star. Then he gave his pocket watch to me. It was his cherished treasure, appearing in every one of his adventure tales. He explained that difficult times were ahead, and assured me that the watch would guide me. He said. As long as I kept moving forward, I'd eventually reach my desired destination. And then, it was as if I heard the distant sound of a train whistle echoing throughout the room. Exactly, Misha! And then we followed that whistle, didn't we? Yeah. I think I can still find the way we took back then. Oh. This is the dream jigsaw, right? So we're supposed to find the exit. But where can we find the last piece? Do you remember? You said you obtained a mysterious shard when you stumbled into this place. Uh, did I? Check my inventory. Hey, oh, this, right. So this shard is also connected to Misha? Looks like we're just one step from revealing the truth. Let's get to the other side and investigate. Okay. Oh, right. Uh, rotate. There. Ah, okay. There we go. There's a portal. But in the end, we arrived at a new world. We've overcome so many challenges. We lost our way so many times. Let's continue sailing. Not even the sea can stop us. We finally come out of the out of the fog, across the ocean to our destination. Captain Misha, we are now heading in the correct direction. This is it. Oh. Uh. This. Oh. Is my room of clocks. This is the room we first started in. What? It all comes full fucking circle. What? Well, I spent my time waiting for Grandpa to return from his voyage. Walter gave me this workshop. And it became my secret base. Here, I learned how to repair clockwork and gears out of my fondness of precision mechanics. In my dreams, I was the captain of the compass, embarking on adventures with my companions, Clocky and Miss Mirror, in search of the new world. I... I was born and raised here. So, this building in the dream bubble is your childhood home? Yes, but not exactly. Uh. To be more precise, this dream bubble itself is my home. What? You live in a dream bubble. So what's that make you? <laughs> Looks like you've remembered everything now. Wait, wait! Why does it feel like everyone else knows something I don't? Yeah, you're the only one in the dark. Too bad I don't know either. I'm still a bit puzzled here. <laughs> Marge, do you remember when she mentioned the clocky that only she could see? Yeah, the little guy here, right? But we all saw him in Dreamflux Reef. Right. right? And Mr. Yang even greeted him. Looks like everyone on the Astral Express has a childlike spirit. <laughs> the answer lies in the Astral Express. 
Her experience shows that neither Firefly nor Acheron can see this clocky. And when we were in Dreamflux Reef, you may have noticed that for some reason, nobody outside of the crew had ever talked with Clocky. Wait a minute, does that mean... Yeah, knows that too. A mimetic life that can only be seen by a select few. It's just like a hidden message. Yeah. Left by someone for the nameless. Okay, so it's not... <laughs> it's not people with childlike wonder, it's only... I guess the express crew can't see Clocky. But Misha can see Clocky too, right? They even grew up together. But Misha hasn't started the way of the trailblaze yet. But he boarded the express, so that must mean something. That's the key to the mystery, March. Now, take a moment to recall. Have you ever seen anyone outside of the crew interact with Misha? Uh... Nope. Uh, well, Gallagher, for one. Uh, and that's it. Wait. Uh, no way! Wait. That's the answer, March 7th. This dream bubble is the place where I was born. And I... I'm a dweller in this dream. Just like a memory zone meme. I should have stayed here and waited for you. When reality and memories merged, I unconsciously pushed open that door and left the bubble with Clocky. So it's not that the Watchmaker's dream bubble is empty. Oh. But rather, the stuff inside ran away? And the whistle you heard was the sound of the Express arriving at Pentacony? That's one way to see it. Oh. But I believe there's a longer story behind all this. It's best for Misha himself to explain all the details. So I guess when he heard the whistle, he just unknowingly left the dream bubble entirely, huh? How about we start with your name? Now, should we call you Misha or... Oh, oh God, <laughs> huge lore drop coming in. <laughs> Thank you all for helping me rediscover my true self. Now, please allow me to reintroduce myself. I was born on Lushaka. In the Presmere system, adopted by seafarers Mikhail and Char, they gave me a treasure. A name that carried their hopes. Mikhail Char Legwork. Oh, shit. Or simply, Misha. Wait, did his outfit change? No, no, I'm hallucinating. Wait, no, we did it? <laughs> Yeah, Misha is McKay. I thought that was... Oh my... Oh, this this game and its fucking plot to us, man. I thought Misha was Mikhail, but then we saw the actual Mikhail, so I thought, like, eh, that theory is dead. Nope, never mind. Full 180, back to fucking Misha Mikhail car. If you prefer, you can call me by a more familiar name. The Watchmaker. Oh, shit. <laughs> Unfortunately, that legendary figure is no more. I am only a reflection of his life. As for the child who has been with you, he's the innocent protagonist of Misha's childhood dream. Oh. A friend of Clocky. A young apprentice. And a future mechanic on the Express. And this also marks the beginning of his journey, devoted to the trailblaze. At the, the end, end of the, of the journey, journey. Whoa! <laughs> I left this little flame, which I so, so cherished, cherished, in, in my, my deepest, deepest dreams, dreams, hoping to pass it on, on to the nameless of future, future generations. generations. However, he somehow left the dream bubble and forgot all about his task. I apologize for all the confusion this caused. Damn. What a fucking... This game and his fucking plot just is insane. <laughs> <laughs> because he was born with a desire to trailblaze, wasn't he? I don't think Misha has forgotten his role as a guide. He remembered it, 
and that's why he mistakenly appeared as a hotel doorman in her dream from the very beginning. The one who brought our unconscious friend here must have been Misha. If that's the case, we encountered the watchmaker's legacy from the beginning, didn't he we? He was just right in front of us the whole time. <laughs> well, I have a sarcastic friend who says I always take big detours and end up back where I started. Perhaps that's what every nameless has to go through. But in the end, you found me. I'm sure you're all wondering what my legacy is. I believe my hound has mentioned the Stellaron and my wealth. If I may apologize, the Stellaron part is real. As for my wealth, however, it's nothing more than a baseless rumor. I left my homeland as a child and embarked on the journey of Trailblaze. I traveled to various planets until finally reaching Esdana where my friends and I built the original Peniconi and fought for its future ever since. I've been moving forward all my life, doing what I could to overcome the obstacles in my path. But ultimately, my journey reached its end, and I left behind no possessions worth entrusting. Yeah, I believe when he said Hound, he meant Gallagher. Which is probably why he always refers to himself as a dog. <laughs> so, if you ask what's left within this worn-out train engine that can be called a legacy, I suppose it's the things that are still burning in the engine's furnace. Yeah, he just casually just said, yeah, sorry for leaving behind a cellar, Ron. <laughs> now that you're well aware of the current situation of Peniconi, I certainly hope that you'll help me get this world back on track. But I'll leave that decision to you. For the path of Trailblaze is never paved by others. All I have for you is a story and two gifts. Oh! I want to give you my pocket watch. Oh! It has accompanied me throughout my long journey, guiding that naive child forward and has been blessed with the presence of so many great people up to this day. And then the second gift, your hat? And my hat too. Yes! The one who navigated for me placed it on my head and planted a fanciful thought in my mind. The trailblazing expedition will never end. Never end. <laughs> it's time for you to make your choice. Once, Once you've made, made up, up your mind, mind open, open that, that door, door and, and enter the long dream of an old man. I'll, I'll be, be waiting, waiting for you at the end of this corridor of time. <laughs> Wait for me! What a fucking... Let's make a decision. What fucking masterful storytelling. What the hell? <laughs> Although I don't think anyone will have any objections. I choose the trailblaze. I want to witness a legacy. I object. <laughs> nah, I'm not going to joke at a time like this. I choose to trailblaze. Of course. We've come this far. Surely there's no other option than moving forward. In that case, it's unanimous. Then let's proceed together to the end of this dream and tell Mikhail our decision. Yeah, we didn't even really need to discuss for long, did we? We already know. Also. Nah, no, it's, it's not going to give it to me right away. Nope, but probably next up. <sighs> Mikhail, where are you going? Oh. Someone has to step up and save Lushaka. So why can't it be me, Misha? Wait, Seafarer, okay, Seafarer Mikhail, then Mikhail car, car legwork. Hmm. Please don't go. And if you must, please take me with you. Don't leave me alone. Even without me, you know how to proceed forward, brave Captain Misha. The compass is waiting for you. Haven't you always wanted to be a better adventurer than me? 
Now go, board that train, and start your journey. Where are you going, Mikhail? Oh. I, I'm going to clean the floor in the parlor car. I've promised the conductor. Wait, first tell me, did you fix this watch? Um, yeah. I know what it looked like before. Its chain was broken, the back case torn, and the marks on the dial all worn out. How did you manage to fix it? Oh, that's cool. It's like, we're seeing his whole trailblazing journey. Well, uh, it's hard to explain, but I knew it could be fixed. It's the hands, Mr. Amundsen. Its hands were intact and pointing in the right direction, so I knew there would be a way to fix the rest. <laughs> I see. You'll work with me from now on. Haven't you always wanted to tinker with this train? You're its mechanic now. As for the conductor, I'll do the talking. But, but I only know how to fix watches. You can fix a watch, you can fix a train. <laughs> I'll teach you what you need to know. Where are you going, legwork? It's time to head to our Whoa. next stop. <sighs> I... I'm staying in Astana with Rosalina and Tiernan. I see. This place reminds you of home. The people of Astana have only achieved a tiny victory and still have a long way to go towards true freedom. Hanunu needs us. Hanunu. <laughs> Don't worry. Not all journeys lead to the stars. Yeah, the, the man who inspired the Express, Hanu. <laughs> our path of trailblaze will continue. Yeah. I knew you wouldn't stay on the Express forever. Leave in peace, my friend. And, uh, take this with you. This is Mr. Amundsen's hat. Uh, but why? When he departed, he said he would leave it to his best student. Well, I suppose the time has come. Farewell, legwork. Take care of Tiernan and Rosalina. And don't forget to write to us. Where are you going, watchmaker? Don't worry, Micah. Just going on a little trip. Oh, even Micah's getting involved now. Someone has to be at the forefront of the interstellar frontier, and I'm the only former nameless in Panacone. So why can't it be me? Because you're all we have. Have you forgotten about Tiernan? The cosmos is way more dangerous now. What will happen to Penacone if we lose you too? But what will happen to Penacone if we don't find a way out? Ah, oh, Tiernan. How could I ever forget him? I've spent countless sleepless nights asking myself why I didn't go with him back then. Mm. We nameless won't stop. Don't worry, Micah. It's just a matter of getting back to my old profession. Just wait for me to come back. But if, and... It's a big F. If I don't come back in one piece, then you'll become the next watchmaker. Where are you going, old man? Oh, galley boy. <laughs> oh, you're here. Answer my question. What are you up to? Relax, Gallagher. I just came up with a great idea. Wanna hear it? Oh, come on. Aren't all your ideas just ways to get yourself killed? I may be blunt here, but you're the last remaining hero in Penacone. If you die too, the secret of the Stellaron will go to the grave with you. Yes, I'm afraid there's no way out in Penacone, so I'll have to consider alternatives beyond Asdana. We'll organize a festival using the watchmaker's legacy as a facade. Oh. Um, and send invitations to the entire cosmos to gather people here. This was planned the whole time. So, a desperate struggle against the family? Desperate? <laughs> Don't we have you here, my friend? This task is challenging, but what hasn't been challenging for us along the way? Well, whatever you do, remember, make sure to send an invitation to the Astro to the Astro Express. And now we're all caught up. Where are you going? Uh. Oh, it's you, Clocky. Take me to Dreamflux Reef. 
Last night, I had a long dream about the day we met. I want to write down that dream. Write it down? Why? Oh, so I won't forget it. Do you remember how you got your name, Clocky? Of course! You told me that when you were a kid, you lived in a room full of clocks. Those wall clocks and pocket watches grew up with you and were your best friends. Yeah, I love how every single character in this game, like, has a role to fulfill and not, uh, not just tagging along for the journey. Like, yeah, Akron, Black Swan have big roles, Sunday and Robin also have big roles. Even Misha and Gallagher, who we thought would, would just bystanders, have major, like, plot relevance to the story here. Yes, but what I didn't mention was there's a funny misunderstanding behind it. I was a kid, and there was always a special pocket watch in my memories. It was with my grandpa, guiding him on his sea voyages and leading the way in his every adventure story. I wanted to have a pocket watch like that too. And that's when you appeared in my dreams. Yeah. Every night, we boarded the compass and set sail together. But you know what? It wasn't until the day my grandpa gave it to me that I realized it wasn't a pocket watch at all. Huh? It was a compass. So your name <laughs> should have been Compassy. <laughs> that doesn't roll off the tongue as easily. <laughs> and the watchmaker is just a nameless. <sighs> oh. Oh, we're actually... Misha now. So, where to next? Wait a sec. You know, Clocky, I don't think I'll be going anywhere else. Take a rest in the moonlight. Yep, Clock, uh, Mikhail's final resting place. Damn. <laughs> No, I will stop time and prevent myself from aging. Nah. <laughs> Rest under the moonlight. I've traveled far enough. And it's time for a little break. Oh. So, we'll set out again. When you're rested? <laughs> no. I'll stay here. And then... This is where it ends. This is... where it ends? What do you mean, Misha? You told me that the trailblazing expedition would never end. Yeah, that's what I said. So now, it's up to you to decide your next destination. My next destination? What's that supposed to be? I've been following you, Misha. <laughs> you're acting weird today. <laughs> Aww. If you're feeling down, we can just do what we usually do. <laughs> With the clockwork. <laughs> no, I... I'm not feeling down. As for clockwork? Yeah. It resolves all problems in this dream. So, do you know what clockwork actually is? Hmm. I'm not quite sure. Well, everyone gets lost at times. They may hesitate and doubt which way to go. That happens in this dreamscape and beyond. But don't worry. Everyone goes through moments of uncertainty and hesitation. Eventually, they gather the courage to make bold decisions. 
Aww. Whether it's calming, joyful, angry, or, or sad, all they need is a little nudge to take that step toward where they truly belong. I'm leaving that little nudge with you, and I hope you'll share it with others. Such is the essence of clockwork, the will of the trailblaze. The will of the trailblaze, man. <laughs> that scene almost got me all teary-eyed. spin around non-stop, indicating confusion, frustration, and weakness. Ah. Uh. But ultimately, people still need to move forward. Just, Just like, like your hands, hands. always oh, pointing ahead. This is where my journey ends. From now on, it is your path to walk. Yes! It means taking paths your predecessors forswore and venturing even further. The Pentaconium Mikhail's dreams does not belong to order. Let's do this! Harmony Trailblazer, let's fucking go! <laughs> I reject the order. I can't believe that Eon would cast a glance at Penacony at a time like this. Is it because of the resonance from the legacy of the Trailblaze? Or perhaps the bond between you is so strong that it even impresses an Eon. Well, there might be another possibility. Perhaps they want to witness, on behalf of the Fallen Eons, who will hold the future of Penacony. Not gonna lie, fucking... Yeah, that scene between Misha and Clocky almost made me tear up. Man, oh, fucking Penacony. Fucking Xiaoji. You cooked my guy. You fucking cooked, Xiaoji. Okay, we're not done yet, but... Man, this man has been cooking so far. <laughs> That's the case. On behalf of the Dream Master of Penacony and the 107,336 members of the Oak family, I'm extending a formal invitation to all of you. I'm cordially inviting you all to the Penacony Grand Theater to participate in the upcoming Charmony Festival. And, of course, you won't be in the audience, but on center stage. Since the future of the Stellaron, Penacony, and even the entire cosmos is at stake, let's draw a conclusion there. In all fairness. In battle! If you truly believe in Akavili's path, then show me their courage and determination. Let's do this. Also, hey, we well, Robin, where are they? Yes! Tread on a new path. Harmony Trailblazer. Oh my god, and you can actually see like all the characters in, in this splash art as well. That is so fucking good. <laughs> Hang on, I want to view that splash art again. We had like everybody there. Oh, we can even try out tr Harmony Trailblazer. You have Sparkles there. I think... I, I don't know who that is. I, it's too blurry to figure out. I, but I know that's Sparkle for sure. Oh, uh, even Clock is in our splash art as well. I think it's a Venturine up there? I believe this is either Black Swan or Acheron. Man. Yeah, let's let us let us try Harmony Trailblazer out. I want to see what she can do. Because I don't I know nothing about her kid. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that bright as Swan Stell's face. Increases break effect for all allies. Causes additional break damage when an ally attacks enemies that are weakness broken. Wait, seriously? Hang on, I'm gonna read her, her abilities in more detail. Also, hey, we have Gallagher right here as well. Trailblazer immediately regenerates 8.7 energy when an enemy's weakness is broken. Imaginary these imaginary damage equal to 43% of the Trailblazer's attack and to a single target enemy, and these additional damage for four times, with each time dealing imaginary damage equal to 43% of a Trailblazer's attack to a random. Okay, so you just get to hit them for like five times, okay. And basic attack is just the same. Grants the grants all allies the backup Ganser effect, lasting for three turns. This duration reduces by one at the start of the Trailblazers every turn. Allies with the backup Ganser effect have their break effect increased by 26%. And when 
They attack enemy targets that are weakness broken in the weakness broken state. The toughest reduction of the attack will be converted to one instance of super break damage. So it's just continuous just break damage. Oh shit. When using skill additionally increases the toughest reduction of the first instance of damage by 100%. When a number of enemy targets on the field is 5 or more, uh, 5, uh, 4, 3, 2, 1, the super brick damage triggered by the backup dancer effect is increased by 20, 30, 40, 50, or 60 percent. Okay. And additionally, delays the enemies by 30 percent when their weakness broken. Okay. Please stay tuned. Oh, Please yeah. Stay tuned. Oh, we yeah, even fucking throw the hat some more. That is sick. Please stay tuned. Yeah, Aventurine, where are you? Please stay tuned. We gotta perform White Knight. All right, let's do this. Bam! The triple use of regenerates energy when weakness is broken. Increases all allies' break effect, which is her technique. Okay. Time to test our rapport. Oh my god, look at her. The f <laughs> fucking Michael Jackson X pose. I love it. Uh, yeah, I want to see her animations here. Let's improvise. Get him, Clocky. <laughs> <laughs> oh Open shit. Well, that is such a fucking hype awakening for like this new path. Also, this is freaking dinosaur again. Take your positions. Okay, then what's her basic tech like? Hang on, yeah, I'm gonna slow it down for this. Time. Okay, just throw the hat. <laughs> Hang on, let's let's get her burst up going here. Okay, let's do it. Ultimate. The mood is set just right. The mood is set just right. Let the show begin. Yeah, Clocky! <laughs> Break it down! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> oh, so it was the fucking animation we saw in the White Knight trailer. <laughs> let's improvise. Alright, let's do this. <gasps> Holy shit! 30k super break damage? 42k! Gallagher, you next. Indulge yourself! 42k break damage. Shrey, you next. A <laughs> hundred fucking K? <laughs> Holy shit. Oh yeah, slow it down to see the super break effect. Yeah, I will, I will. Also, yeah, what's our break effect right now? Holy shit! 300? 369! And Pela, you have 300. Oh my god, that's a crap ton of break effect. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, hang on, let me see this uh, super break effect here. It ain't over yet. Bam! Ultimate dance move. Oh, I think I missed it. Oh, but hell yeah. I have many harmony units as is, but fuck it. Let us build Harmony Trailblazer. I mean, I have her good and built already. I just need to put the right relics in her. I'll just slap on the speed set for now, because I think that... Actually, no, she needs break effect, doesn't she? Oh, yep, and I need to, like, farm for her all over again, even though I just finished building Robin. Before our paths diverge, savor the shared journey. Savor the shared journey. If you do three bars of toughness damage, you do more damage than two bars of toughness damage, is what they're saying. Oh, okay, I see. Use a watchmaker set on her. Oh, of course you have to do use a watchmaker set on her. Only makes sense, after all. I don't have any good watchmaker pieces, though. Yeah, you just basically want to stack break effect on her just all the way up, right? Break effect and speed. Yeah, gotcha. Not the best builds, but yeah, I do. I, I am motivated to build Harmony Trailblazer. I hope they give us like a trial version. Um, like in like in upcoming fights. Uh, so, hey, Firefly, we're back. <laughs> Does that mean he wants to fight us during the Charmony Festival? I'm afraid so. This is weird. Aren't arc villains usually plotting some dirty conspiracy in the end? <laughs> but he actually said something like, in all fairness, could it be that he's underestimating us? Yeah, if Harmony Trailblazer is also like break effects, wh what bonkers combo could you pull off if you had her and Ron May? And also Shui too. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah, now I just want to build a full on break effect team. committed to his own philosophy and genuinely wants to prove that the order is right right he, he thinks he's not evil he just thinks he's right i 
sensed a strong conviction and a desire for dominance. Yeah, no, I guess from now on we're gonna have to run like double harmony teams. Unless he wins fair and square. Oh yeah, true. He, she would like do super well alongside uh, Boot Hill as well. That's why he'll give it his all in the upcoming battle. We, but we won't back down either. But he, but he's such a nice gentleman. If evil, why so nice? I flexed on him too hard with my peak swag. Guess I messed around and found out. <laughs> Stell, stop! You're killing me with, with this fucking Gen Z speak. You ever wonder why they release a new tutorial mission that specifically mentions that physical and fire break is higher than damage in the others? Yeah, she's really putting the harm in harmony. <laughs> Yeah, anyone who could take advantage of break effect is gonna fucking shine. Ah, oh, you. Every time an important moment arrives, you hesitate. We've even dealt with a Lord Ravager of the Destruction, so a follower of the Order won't be a big deal. Anyway, we can't leave the Stellaron unchecked. This is about trailblazing a bright future for Penacony, and fulfilling Mikhail's and his predecessor's long-cherished wishes. Now that we've taken up the mantle, we can't afford to fail them. However, the same applies to the Order. Their plan didn't materialize overnight. And they have the profound collective consciousness of the planet of festivities behind them. I was gonna say, yeah, didn't we lose against, almost lose against Fantilia if not for Jing Yuan and Dan Hong? A desire to dream. To slumber and escape reality. All those hidden emotions have given birth to the sweet dream of the Order. They've harnessed the will of an entire planet to create an Eon. This confrontation is far more complicated than a simple power struggle. To secure Penacony's future, fighting on the stage alone is not enough. What do you mean? Are you not coming with us? I believe Firefly is trying to say that Aww. she's going off to another battle. Really? Damn. Mm -hmm. Cause she's just like, I'm not playable yet. Before I left. So good luck. The Destiny Slave told me that this journey would bring unforgettable rewards. Even though the script he gave me only had a few lines, I couldn't ignore them. Because one of the lines said, I'll experience death three times in the land of the dreams. Three times? This can't be serious, right? Wait, what? The first time was a painful death. Right, when he was stabbed by the blade of dormancy, which led to all subsequent events. The script will always come true. But, in a way that will only be revealed when that page is turned. Ah. So now I've understood the meaning of my second death. And I am prepared to face it. If all goes well, my efforts will provide crucial support for you. Only... By achieving victory in this battle, can we secure a future for Penacony? And only then, my third and final death won't come true in the most terrible form. The most terrible form? Does that mean... The true death. Where everyone in Penacony loses themselves completely. In the Shit. sweet dream of the Order. We must do everything we can to prevent that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Have you made up your mind, Firefly? Yes. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. Thank you again for your assistance for the Astral Express. May we meet again, in reality. Yeah. Farewell, everyone. May your trailblazing expedition never end. Fairly well for now, Firefly, until in 2.3 where I pull for you. <laughs> uh, here we go. 
I dreamed of a scorched earth. Uh. <laughs> Are you ready? A new shoot. She's about to transform. <laughs> it bloomed in the morning sun. Oh shit. <laughs> Let's go. Maybe we meet again. In reality. May we meet again. Oh, back to Blade and his driver's license. <laughs> yeah, hinge. <she? laughs> After today, Japella's name will disappear from cosmic history. And the Everflame Mansion will take its place. In the that's your next. Oh fuck! Topic. I did. I clicked too early. After today, Japella's name will disappear from cosmic history, and the Everflame Mansion will take its place. I hope we meet Firefly again. Not too distant future. You'll receive an invitation. She's been so interesting in this. I yeah, I love her so much. <laughs> I I have to pull for her. <laughs> that's your next stop. Land of the dreams. Panacone. Oh yeah, this is um the 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 epilogue of uh or what happens after this scene. I hope you find whatever you seek there. Be it answers or salvation. <laughs> you mean my three deaths. <laughs> yes, that is salvation for me. I'm jealous, honestly. Silver Wolf told me about it. It's such a shame <laughs> that it's not part of my script. I would like to die someday. Well, I want to live. I'm never afraid of death. The opposite of death is eternal life, and that's... That's something I'll never desire. Especially looking at you, Blade. People die. And I am no exception. Death is like a script. A fate that cannot be defied. But that's exactly why we have to choose where we want to rest forever. Do you exist just to perish? Are you not the same, Blade? The end you desire is not one dictated by others. If I were to die now, I would only be a weapon. I believe I should die as a human, though its definition escapes me. Isn't this the answer that ordinary people look for their whole lives? A name that can be carved onto their tombstone. A tombstone that belongs to me once bore the inscription, Glamoth's Iron Cavalry. Then it changed to Stellaron Hunter. But one day, it will bear the name Firefly. And all the brilliance she showed at the end of her life. Good luck with your death, Firefly. That's hmm. quite unexpected, old man. Uh. Who would have thought your crazy plan would actually work? Do all you nameless fools just act on a whim? I can sense that this false sweet dream is coming to an end. The nameless may be young, but they had the ability to achieve this goal. Just like you did in your time. It's a shame you won't be able to see it firsthand. <laughs> mm. Maybe I won't either. Once something fictional is seen through, it ceases to exist. Yeah, not just those nameless. Even Mr. Wings is just like you. Stubborn, won't listen or give up, no matter what. Well, fate is unpredictable, I guess. If we weren't bound by those cursed paths, maybe we could have had some good talks. But in the end, we managed to do it. And now we can find solace. Remember how those idiots cursed us? They said, go to hell, you worthless traitors. <laughs> well, 
I don't know if they really meant it, but... If longing for freedom means going to hell, then I'll be joining you soon, you fool. Uh, oh god, Galaga, don't, don't die too, <laughs> please. <laughs> Let's get together and have supper again in hell. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot. There's one more thing. Here's to you. A glass of hello and goodbye, trailblazer. Yeah. To the imperfect tomorrow. Tomorrow. It's oh. Warm here, isn't it? I again. You're lucky to have found shelter from the rain. Let alone fresh berries in this desolate place. Huh. I was just following the scent of life. It's particularly strong in a place like this. It's a shame these berries don't have much flavor. Seriously? In case you didn't know, this fruit is pretty juicy. The only downside is that when you chew it, it becomes extremely spicy. <laughs> have you... Lost your sense of taste? <clears throat> I can still taste certain things, like a faint sweetness. Before coming here, I stopped by a place called Orkron. It had barren cliffs and nights lit by bonfires. Burgundy snow would fall from the sky, and when it landed on my tongue, it tasted like raspberries. The flavor wasn't exactly sweet, but it left a lasting impression. When I think back on my past, I realize that what's tying everything together isn't the big events, but rather these small yet unforgettable moments. Don't worry about it. Losing oneself is a reality that every self and I later must face. At least I haven't completely lost my senses and memories yet. Well, congratulations on adding another footnote to your journey. By the way, are you always alone? No, I had a companion in Orkron. Oh? She's a short, nameless girl who aspired to explore IX. She always said she'd walk a path deeper and farther than Akavili's. <laughs> Quite an ambition for such a small girl. Hmm. So, uh, what happened? This is the first I'm hearing of this. She... Became stagnant water. Well, stagnant. Oh, my condolences. Condolences. I don't need them. The girl left with a smile. She never regretted her choice, and most definitely won me to say goodbye with a smile. So, that's what I did. That's proof that you're grieving for her. Or perhaps I'm just afraid. Afraid. I rarely sense that emotion from you. What do you fear? I'm afraid I'll forget the 30 days I spent with her. Just like all the other days in my life. Most of them have already washed away with the rain, disappearing mm. into an unseen realm. I fear that those vivid red memories will fade away too. Mm. There isn't much color left. And besides this faint, warm red, there's almost nothing. Hard to imagine. A ranger accustomed to bloodshed, destruction, and chaos finding warmth in the red color. Because I have experienced this warmth many times. Long ago, I promised someone that I'd bring it to more people. And that for every remaining moment of my life, I'd strive for... A better ending for all. Oh. The girl's story is also mentioned in the Pioneer set. Oh shit, I have to read that then. As long as this red color still lingers, I have a chance to fulfill that promise. It represents a burning fire, a blooming flower, the berries in this cave, and life itself. Fleeting yet still dazzling. In the end, 
it will lead me beyond the horizon of existence. And on the other side, I will cut off Nihility. <laughs> the one blessed mm. by the sleeping and shapeless is considering how to kill them. That's truly pure Nihility. But you're right about one thing. After spending so much time near this stagnant water, only when I look at this vibrant red fire, do I realize that I'm still alive. When will this rain ever stop? Perhaps when the sorrows of the departed have finally quieted down, the sky will clear up. Four system hours until the Charmony Festival. Oh, hey, right, these guys. <laughs> yeah, they. What are they doing this whole time? Hmm. Have you heard of a planet named Biari Scamandros, Don Hong? Nope. It's one of the paradise kingdoms under the. Biari Scamandros. A sought after wonderland for the inhabitants. Of what a Don unique Don name. And minor systems. Half an amber era ago, the family held an unprecedented festival there. And after that, everyone on the planet became part of the family. Do you think the same thing will happen on Penacony? Yes. Or how else can we explain it? The family deliberately used the Watchmaker's invitation to keep all the Pathstriders here but banished the Emanator of the Nihility. Because of the Nihility, I'm rarely affected by the power of other paths, but somehow I can unconsciously infiltrate them. <laughs> Maybe that's the risk they're trying to avoid. I would disagree. Biori Scamandros is not part of the credit system or connected to the Silver Rail. Mm -hmm. It's nothing more than a remote civilization sheltered by the Harmony. But Panacone is different. If the family messes with Panacone, that would be like declaring war on almost half of the factions in the cosmos. They have no reason to do that. No, they don't. If they truly serve the Harmony, that is. Yep, and we know at this point in the other not. Nope. <laughs> what do you mean? The path in Panacone is impure. The Harmony here has impurities. Do you remember the ancient swarm disaster? Yep. Tazeroth, the propagation. Tazeroth, okay, that's how you pronounce that. The universe. And it eventually evolved into a fierce battle among all eons. Two paths lost their eons in that war. You right. The propagation and the order. Shipe, the harmony. Legend has it that they participated in the crusade against the Imperator Insectorum and devoured Anna the Order for unknown reasons. Holy Forgaroni! Forgaroni? So saying that the two leaderless paths are working behind the scenes. But I don't see any descendants of the propagation in Penacony. Could it be that the remnants of Beyond the Sky Choir are hiding within the family? Trying to resurrect a fallen eon? Yep. I can't say for sure, but they're definitely planning something for the Charmony Festival. Whoa. Whoa. This is <laughs> way too complicated. Is this why you want us to leave Astana right away? Are you giving up? The Charmony Festival will start soon. There's one thing that I need to confirm no matter what. A warp jump is the best way to do so. Mm. Time is running out. I have another plan. Uh. You're gonna call. Hold on. Yes. I'm thinking of using the Jade Abacus of Allying Oath. Yes, we're gonna call our boy. <laughs> also, yeah, the music just changed to the Show music. Yep. Exactly. The assistance from the Lawful Cloud Knights would be enough. Think it over carefully. You can only use that once in your lifetime. 
Ah, uh, never mind. <laughs> no need. Jing Yuan's my homeboy. <laughs> he'll, he'll give me another one. I have considered it thoroughly. My companions are... They're also once-in-a-lifetime treasures. Uh. Oh, shit. Three system mounts of the charming vessel. Oh, God. It's almost time. Are you the only one here, my child? The Nameless is quite the diplomat. Our secrets have spread like wildfire within the family. And IPC starships are gathering towards Astana. This is a crucial moment for us. So, where is the chosen one who harmonizes the varied sounds? Yeah, we still don't know what happened to Robin and Walt, by the way. <laughs> what do you mean, Master? I'm right here in front of you, aren't I? You know, she was supposed to be the star of the Charmony Festival in our plan. But the plan has changed. As her brother, I... I know she doesn't want to sing for the Order. So I'll take her place. <laughs> You've always been wise beyond your years. I'm sure you understand the consequences of your choice. Yeah, they know that Jade Abacus was a one-time use. I thought we could just call up our homeboy whenever we wanted. <laughs> if you consider this a betrayal, well, there can't be two suns in the sky. I'll step up and take down the other sun if necessary. Do you believe in karma? <laughs> if karma exists, then everyone has their own karma. You have yours, and I have mine. And my karma has nothing to do with you, Mr. Gopherwood. Hmm. All right. Since you're willing to sacrifice yourself for her, I'll grant your wish. Well, the compromise came sooner than expected. Why? You and your sister were born as twins of the Order. Oh, shit. What the fuck are those dancing robots? To follow this path to the end. Is this part of your plan? Of course. You're still as clever as you were when you were a child. The opening is near. Go, my child. Seize the power of the harmony and reveal your karma. I have one final question, Master. Why did you choose to bring the Order to Penacony? Wouldn't it have been better to choose a desperate world instead of a city filled with hope and dreams? Oh shit, the music's like wrapping up. Oh yeah, true. You can't just call the Alliance to help you whenever you want. <laughs> it's for justice, my child. Justice, you say? If we lose justice in our hearts, we'll make the same mistake as the Harmony did. So, it's not you who manipulates the dreamscape with the Stellaron, but... Well, that's where our conversation but? ends. But? Go ahead. The 107,336 souls of the Oak family have dreamed of this moment too many times. Uh? The what? The bird just died? The fuck? I shall ascend to the heavens, becoming the scorching sun. Bathed in my light, whoa, whoa, what the? my people shall flourish, while all evil shall be eradicated. All of them died? 